Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if get Tsunade pregnant. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Months after Pain's utter destruction of the village, the villagers, both citizen and ninjas, were working on rebuilding the village. Tents were set up outside of the perimeter, while the buildings were getting put together. Construction workers from other nations traveled to the destroyed Konoha site to help rebuild and provide the necessary supplies to get the job started. Moments later we see somebody making hundreds of shadow clones to quicken the pace of constructing the village. He had blonde spiky hair, tanned skin, and six identical whisker marks on his cheeks, three on each. Because of his condition his canines and nails were longer than usual, making them fangs that'll poke out of his mouth and claws. Also the pupils in his ocean blue eyes were slitted making it fox-like in appearance. He continued to wear his orange and black jumpsuit. When the villagers witnessed the mass creation of blonde shadow clones, they cheered for their hero. Shouting things like, our blonde hero has finally arrived, and hooray for the hero of Konoha. Some even walked up to him and asked for his autograph. Usually this would make Naruto blush in embarrassment but after months of continuous praise it started grating on his nerves. He had things to do and these people continued to interrupt his plans. Please people I'm very busy. I only created the clones to lend you a hand while I was on my to do my own thing. He said walking between the villagers thinking about just what he was going to do. After nearly going nine tales against pain and meeting his father face to face, he decided to search for his father's estate to collect what was his. He had thousands of clones searching all around high on Kuni. His father mentioned something about his house being near a mountain. His clones checked the cage mountain already and found nothing. But also considering his father's Hiroshin technique the house could be anywhere in the entire continent. Hell, it could be an Iwagakir for all I know, which would be weird. He shook his thoughts away and focused on the job at hand. Three weeks later. It was now three weeks later and the nations were at war. Of course Naruto wasn't told, but he still knew, after all he has gotten smarter and more calmer. Right now he was in a giant turtle. He was given a mission to study and file some animals. So you could already tell he's pissed about that. Well at least something good happened before he got the mission. He found the house of his father around two weeks ago. It was on top of a mountain, a couple of miles away from the valley of the end. He climbed the mountain using nothing but his hands, as physical training of course. I can still remember how pissed I was. The blonde thought as he sat next to a tree to begin meditating for a while. Flashback two weeks ago. The blonde was currently climbing a mountain. His clone informed him his father's house was near the peak. He was suffering from a mild case of nostalgia, due to the house being a couple of miles away from the valley of the end, where he had his first true fight with someone he used to consider his brother. His head peeked over the top of the mountain, and he pulled his body over the top. He was confused how someone would put a house so far up a mountain, or how they even got the supplies up here. He was currently looking over the side of the mountain, he could barely see the ground. Suddenly a bolt of lightning passed right by his ear. Some of the volts touched his ear, causing it to become numb. He turned around to see fireballs coming at him, he swiftly dodged, using chakra to quicken his movements. He ran forward at the regular house that was firing the techniques, but it was difficult when spikes made of earth rose from the ground under him. He didn't know how but purely on instinct he focused chakra on the bottom of his foot, until the chakra actually became solid, and stood on the spike as it rose up. He hopped from one spike to another like this, until after the fifth hop he landed on the ground. How'd I do that? He asked himself, before a whirlwind surrounded him. Yet again on instinct he jumped straight in the air over the top of the small whirlwind and landed outside the whirling. He sprinted to the house after landing and just as he got within 10 yards a force pushed down on him. The gravity was intense, it was at least 10 times as much as it was a couple of feet behind him. Holy Kami, I'm, so heavy. What the hell is wrong with this place? He looked up to see a structure of rock rising from the ground. You've got to be kidding me. He muttered using all of his strength to rise to his feet. Only one of the whirling blood could command this creature. A strange voice spoke from every direction. The blonde didn't have time to freak out because the golem charged at the teenage shinobi, not having a problem with the gravity effect. The blonde was immediately punched out of the area, landing an inch from a spike. Naruto held his chest in pain. He was surprised his heart didn't pop because that hit hurt like hell. 
He looked up to see the golem coming at him, except this time he was even faster. Oh I see, without being weighed down, the rockhead could move faster, great. Naruto thought rolling to the side, causing the golem to miss its punch and completely destroy the spike. Not wasting any time Naruto dashed back to the area where he knew the gravity effect would be in place, might as well get used to it. I could use this as furthering my physical training, he said as he felt himself being weighed down again. He jumped back as the golem struck with an overhead axe strike, Naruto then jumped as high as he could when the golem threw a wide haymaker. He landed on the arm, but when the arm stopped he kept going and he was flung from his position. His face collided with the floor and he yelled into the ground. His danger sense told him to roll and since it saved his life so many times in the past he rolled over. Just in time, because the golem's fist was in the ground. Now on his back he reached into his pouch and grabbed a exploding note and threw it in the balder's face. Katsu, he yelled as it exploded. He used this time to rise to his feet and make a run for the house. Without even going a full meter his right foot was grabbed. He looked back to see the golem was without a scratch, this is going to hurt. He mumbled as he was lifted into the air and slammed to the ground. He coughed blood as dust rose around him. This cannot be the way it ends, I need to think of a way to put an end to this torture. He became angry and when a small amount of Kyubi's Yuki entered his system he began to yell. You fool, stop using my chakra. The blonde stopped the flow of demonic chakra, causing the pain to stop. Don't use my chakra again, there's something different about this place, and the use of demonic chakra causes serious pain. Remember that kanji we seen carved in the side of the mountain on the way up here? Yeah it said, shin, meaning pure so I guess anything that deals with malice or hatred would get rejected painfully. Right, you need to find another way to deal with the rock. The blonde nodded as he felt himself being lifted into the air, getting an idea. As he came out of the cloud of dust he finished his last hand sign, here, eat the only lightning technique I know, Raiden. Right Osho, almost immediately a series of lightning bolts came out of Naruto's hands. The blonde knew that earth was tremendously weak against lightning techniques, he was proved right when the golem exploded causing rocks to fly everywhere. He landed on his back with a smile on his face, ha, huh, it's over. He panted, this time he was proved wrong when the structure began to repair itself right before his eyes, oh come on, really. He said as he began to remember what he heard earlier, only one of the whirling blood can command the creature. Does that mean only an Uzumaki can take control of the golem? He said to himself as the golem in question was fully put back together. The walking boulder began walking toward the blonde genin. Stop! The blonde yelled causing the golem to falter in its step. This angered the blonde, I command you to stop. This didn't do anything as the golem continued. I said be still. Naruto yelled, one because he was angry with the golem and two because he was feeling pain worse than when pain stabbed him with all of those rods. This had the most effect as the golem stopped, now go back to wherever you came from. The golem nodded and began breaking, the ground absorbing it. After the last rock was absorbed Naruto dropped to his knees the fight finally over. After a while Naruto rose back to his feet and began walking towards the house. Well at least you can move easier. Yeah that's because I had to fight a fucking structure of rock. I guess you can do anything when you have to fight for your life. Even if it's withstanding gravity 10 times the regular amount. After reaching within 5 yards of the house a hologram of his mother and father appeared in front of him. He took a step back in shock and surprise, he was more surprised when the holograms vanished. Thinking it was a genjutsu he pressed his fingers into the ram seal and muttered, Kai. Sending a pulse of chakra in all directions. He watched shocked as places in the air became distorted and just inches around the house, telling him there was some kind of barrier around the house and also where the jutsus came from. After his revelation he stepped forward, bringing the holograms of his parents back. Hey son, I see you found the house and got past the golem. That's your Uzumaki blood at work there. I was a little nervous with the idea but I can tell, you activated the lost bloodline of the Uzumaki. Wait bloodline, what bloodline? I have a bloodline, unfortunately I have no idea what the bloodline is supposed to be. All I know is that there was another with it. Kashina stopped talking. Another Uzumaki with the bloodline, but who is it? I'm the only Uzumaki in the world, the last of my kind. Kayubi did you find anything different about me yet? He asked his tenant. Nope, nothing at all. Sorry kid, 
Wow look at you, you sure have grown. What are you 13, maybe you're 14 years old. I remember when you were just born, you were so small, you could fit in my hands. The hologram of the Yandaimi said holding out his hands. Naruto grew angry as the speech progressed. It seems that he was supposed to inherit his parents' place when he turned 13. He clenched his hands into fist, his nails digging into his skin and nearly drawing blood. So how does it feel being a genin? I see you're wearing the Konoha Hite 8 proudly. Minato finished his speech. At this point Naruto just walked forward, his nails drawing blood. It wasn't even a second later when blood pooled inside of his hands before it seeped through his knuckles, running down his fist and dropping onto the floor. Calm down Kit, weren't you on the training trip with your sensei during that time period? And besides, who in the village would even know about your family's private house? Nobody that's who, now calm down. Naruto had reached the door to his house, not paying attention to his hologram parents. He did calm down, after hearing his tenant. He grabbed the knob to the door, when his bloody hand touched the knob, seals that on the knob spread out and soon covered the entire house. This little even also cancelled the barrier around the house and his parents' holograms. He entered the house to find that it was a regular house. It had a couple of chairs and a table in the middle of the living room. The kitchen, although spacious, didn't contain a lot of food. There was only two bedrooms, his parents and the other wasn't entirely finished with the decorations. He could tell though that it was supposed to be his. He found a door in the small hallway and opened it. While he tried to open it, he realized there was a seal with the kanji for blood in the middle. He looked at his hand, the previous blood that covered it was gone, having wiped it on his pants and the wound healed thanks to the fox. He slid a claw over his palm, bringing fresh blood. He pressed the hand to the door watching it light up for a while before he heard a click and the door slid open. He washed his palm heel before walking in, finding a very large amount of scrolls on fuinjutsu, ninjutsu, and genjutsu. He looked around and even found some taijutsu and kenjutsu scrolls. After an hour in the library he left hundreds of clones to learn every single thing they could. Because let's face it, as he was, he didn't have a chance to survive in this war. He also needed to find a way to defeat the remaining Uchiha. He stood outside of the house, getting ready to make his way down, with the thought of his mysterious bloodline on his mind. Release flashback. Naruto looked around scoffing as Karabi wrote lyrics in a little notebook. He needed to find a way of this island, he was getting tired of all of the animals and he's only been here for a couple of hours. What kind of S rank mission was this? Taking care of and categorizing the animals on this island. Sometimes he hated his village. Yo 9 let's go tame yo beast. The big dark skinned kumo ninja said. The blonde glanced at the hachibi container. Sorry B but I've got my own agenda. He said using a body flicker. He appeared at the peak of the turtle island. His headbands, tails, were blowing east with the wind. He knew he was in the coast of Kumo, and if he knew his geography the way back home would be south. He focused wind chakra to his feet and jumped as far as he could, using his newfound skill in advanced wind manipulation to help himself glide in the air. It wasn't long until he landed on the water, half a kilometer away from the island. He didn't stop there, he focused his secondary element to his feet and vanished in a spark of electricity. Since Konoha didn't want him to fight in the war he was going to have to go solo and face Madara himself. He had dozens of clones looking at seals at his house. He knew the man could make himself intangible for a duration of time, by putting his body in another dimension. He just didn't know how long he could stay in that little pocket dimension. So he needed to create a time-controlling seal something that nobody has achieved, ever. Well I'm going to be the first, he thought as he continued running on the water, thankful for his large reserves of chakra, because this was going to be a long run. Several hours later, after running for hours, Naruto was beginning to get tired of running. Constantly using lightning converted chakra to make him go faster than he could ever dream of doing with regular chakra, was starting to really drain his chakra. He looked around and noticed a small chain of islands were near, it was time to take a break anyway. Maybe he could use the time to check up on his time seal. He walked on the little shore and dropped into a meditative position and tried to speak with one of his clones, hoping he could from this distance. Boss, do you? Naruto heard in his head as his clone's voice was zoning in and out. The blonde shook his head and stood up and moved to a closer island and repeated the process, getting the same transmission. 
He continued to do this until he gave up and just got back to running. After an hour he saw a cruise ship, a boat civilians take vacations on. It was perfect as they were going the same way he was, now he could relax and restore lost Charka. But not at the moment as he has yet to board the ship. He stealthily jumped on the side of the ship and poked his head over the railing. The first thing he saw was a beautiful civilian teenaged girl stretching before she got in the pool. She was bending over, her fingers touching her toes. She was dressed in a pink, two-piece bikini and had long luscious legs and a firm behind. She had really long pink hair that went down to her firm ass, and that's all he could see of her. He quickly dropped his head back and fell back to the water. He was blushing and a small trial of blood went down his nose at the thought that popped into his mind, at what he could do to that girl. I knew it deep down that perverted sensei of yours has tainted you, now you're one of us. Ha 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 ha. The blonde heard a deep voice in his head. Naruto shook his head denying the accusation and formed the ram seal. He transformed into a bird and flew on the deck. He craned his neck watching the civilians, keeping up the act of a bird to some of the people that were watching him. He flapped his wings and flew high into the sky passing the clouds, where he dispelled the technique and quickly made shadow clones and they all transformed into birds. The flock of cloned birds then dove towards the ship and landed in various places, with the real Naruto landing somewhere else and dispelled his disguise. He removed his Hite 8 and proceeded to take his jacket and shirt off. After he finished he commanded his clones, via Mind Link, to fly to the private house, where they'll dispel their disguise and replace his other clones. All needed to complete the look of a vacationing citizen with swimming trunks. He glanced around and headed towards the lodging of the boat and looked around for some trunks. He started checking the vacant rooms, but some rooms were vacant which made him wipe his nose. He found some trunks in a vacant room and quickly put them on after taking his pants and sandals off, sealing everything in a time seal on his arm. He only had about two days before the ink was used up and his stuff appeared. The trunks looked great in his opinion, they were black with an orange fiery dragon on his left leg. He looked himself in the mirror and gave a smile as he then stepped outside and began to relax. He sat at a table and a waitress walked up to him. Hey sir would you like a drink to help relax? She asked him, her dark red hair flowing with the breeze and her large sea cup breast were straining against her white and black shirt. Naruto nodded and she brought him a drink minutes later. He took a sip and relaxed, looking at all the lovely ladies around him. Ah oh, I needed this little break. I wonder if B told them I was gone yet, he thought to himself. Two days later with the allied cages, he did what, Tsunade of the Sanin roared in anger at Naruto's stupidity, as Karabi calmly stood there in all seriousness. He was carrying Samahadi, with the previous owner, Kisame, being dead and all. That's right Hokage Dono, Nine just up and left. He doesn't even have his beast fully tamed yet. Without proper control he's going to be captured by Madara. The ox Jin Chiriki said, I don't doubt your accusation Kurabi-san. We must find him before it's too late, Anbu. She yelled and a four-man squad of Anbu appeared in black cloaks. I want you to find and bring Uzumaki Naruto back here, where he will be given his punishment. She ordered and he Anbu nodded and vanished. The big-breasted Hokage turned back to her fellow cages but was stopped from speaking when Maida a guy entered the room with some news. Hokage-sama that enemies are mobilizing. All five cages steeled their emotions at the news and started to mobilize their own troops, thus fully uniting the five nations. Three days later, Naruto had been working on the seal that would help him end Madara's life, the entire time he was on the cruise. In private of course, which was hard with all the ladies wearing skimpy bikinis and having water cling to their bodies. Making him and others, enjoy their assets, even more. He even had fun the last day of the cruise with the same chick whose ass was in his face when he first tried to sneak on the ship. Man was she kinky. Hey Kit, how many times do you think she bit into your neck? The fox said causing Naruto to shiver in delight after being reminded about how kinky she was. A couple times furball, what was her name again? Naruto asked wearing a pair of black cargo shorts and a skin tight rust orange shirt. The seal on his arm to expired and he retrieved his scrolls and ninja equipment. This new attire was better than the last one and he wouldn't be recognized as easily. Well he would still be recognized because of his whisker marks but there was no way to hide them without wearing something on his face. Her name, let's see. 
I think it was Mocha. Man did that babe have some fangs, I can't believe you forgot her name. Kayubi roared in his head in disappointment. I don't own Rosario plus Vampire, no matter how much I want to. Naruto put his weapons pouch back on his hip and sat in the grass. He created a shadow clone that drew seals on his wrist for his shurikens, hey in my defense, it's not my fault. With all the blood sucking she did, I'm surprised I didn't pass out. No I'm glad I didn't pass out. He said getting up after the clone finished and sealed his shurikens. Why are you glad you didn't pass out? A voice said behind the blonde. Oh this one Kai. The blonde slowly turned around to see Madara and Sasuke standing meters away from him. What the fuck are you doing here? And how long have you been standing there? Naruto said getting ready to put his new skills to the test. Dispelling the clones at his house to gain more knowledge. Madara smirked behind his mask as he glanced at Sasuke. Sasuke here couldn't wait to fight you on the battlefield. So after hunting for a couple days, well here we are. We just caught a fox. Madara said chuckling at his joke. Really, the two teens thought, glancing at the older Uchiha. Listen old man, just let me handle this. You just stay back and don't get in my way, or I'll kill you next. Sasuke said hopping off the tree and landed on his feet meters away from Naruto. Finally we meet again Dobi. I hope you're at full power right now, because I sure am. The demented teen said putting a hand on his sword. Naruto stared at his former teammate and noticed something different about him. His eyes contained more focus than rage, and his stance showed his confidence in his apparent victory. Oh, I was afraid of this. The blonde's inner kitsune said. Afraid of what? Naruto asked, unsealing a pair of elongated blades. They were black and only one side was sharpened while the other was jagged or serrated, he didn't know how to explain it. He held them in a reverse grip and got into a relaxed, but ready stance. Do you remember Uchiha Itachi? Kayubi asked as memories of Itachi flashed through Naruto's mind. Flashback. Naruto opened the door to the hotel, only to come face to face with a pair of fully matured Sharingan eyes. It flashed again to show Itachi's body turning into a flock of crows and flying away. Once again it flashed to show one those same crows flying right into his mouth and him swallowing it. I've given you a large amount of my power use it wisely. The blonde was left speechless, unable to give a reply to the retreating Uchiha. The image faded to show rain falling from the sky and Naruto's soaking body standing over Itachi's eyeless corpse. Nothing was said between Naruto and the rest of the group as Naruto took a knee, his hand brushing a loose strand of hair away from the Uchiha's eyeless sockets. I will Itachi-san, the knowledge and power you have given me will help me right your wrongs. The blonde whispered as he stood to his feet. Release flashback. Naruto was returned to the area, when his memories shattered around him. He was returned to see Sasuke raising an eyebrow at his blades. Before the Uchiha could question the blonde about his blades, Naruto spoke. So you took your brother's eyes, the blonde didn't really ask, but stated it like a statement. You reached an all-time low Sasuke Teme. The blonde seed as his pupils stretched horizontally and he entered sage mode. He was glad he knew how to remain completely still, in any position, thanks to his training. The younger Uchiha ignored the taunt and changed his regular Sharingan to his eternal Mangekyu Sharingan, which was a weird mix of both, his and his brother's Mangekyu Sharingans. Meanwhile the elder Uchiha was watching from his perch on a nearby tree branch. Finally the time has come for these two to fight, after all its fate that brought them together. During the pause Naruto had continued to gather nature chakra, making the bright orange of his iris become dark orange. Then he vanished surprising both the Uchihas at his speed, but their eternal Sharingans faintly recognized the path the sage took. Sasuke held up his Kusanagi to the left to block one of Naruto's blades. His knees buckled a little due to the power behind the strike, he was barely able to push the blonde off of him. Said blonde did a back flip and landed three meters away from the douchebag. The Uchiha felt liquid on his cheek and lifted his left hand to his left cheek and looked at the liquid on his fingers. Blood, but how? He muttered. His eyes darkened and a twisted smirk appeared on his face. This just became a lot more exciting. He said, the blonde smirked at his former comrade, hearing what he said. He took a couple of hops back and furthered the length of the sharp wind on his blade. He flexed his fist as he did so, to further ready himself. 
Madara watched from his spot and smirked at the two. It's a shame for someone so skilled to fall, the way he will. Soon I will have my pet back, only to trade it in for a better pet. He stopped thinking to return his focus to the fight. Two hours later, the clearing had been completely destroyed, black flames were everywhere, there were craters inside of craters. In the biggest was Naruto and he was crouching in the middle, with eight tails swaying behind him. His body composition was that of a miniature Kyubi, minus fur and a tail. On the floor in front of the mini Kitsune was Sasuke, the life in his eyes were gone on and his body was completely missing its right side. The young Uchiha's blood was spread all around the battlefield. Instead of taking full control of Naruto, the fox stayed true to the deal he and the blonde made long ago and returned the control to the team. The physical makeup of the fox's body twisted and turned in different directions and minutes later it resembled that of a human. The eight tails morphed and contorted and converged to form two tails, seconds after that the very dense Yuki removed itself from the blonde's body, causing the genin's clothes to be revealed. Or what was left of the attire, the shirt had been ruined by countless Chidori senbons and various fire techniques. Madara stood half a kilometer away because of the destructiveness and longevity of the fight, had destroyed the area they were fighting in. I'm surprised young Naruto killed his best friend. Of course Sasuke had no intention of holding himself back, and had no doubt about wanting to kill his rival. But Naruto of all people, coming out on top, what kind of training did he put himself through since the three months ago? Madara began walking towards the epicenter of the destruction, watching the blonde carefully. The weight of killing his friend would soon cross his mind. Naruto looked down at the remains of his old friend. His eyes started to slightly burn and his weary body forced him to his knees. He rubbed his eyes for a while and opened them, only to come face to face with Sasuke's own face. He had a small flashback to the time he and Sasuke had an intense fight at the Valley of the End. It's ironic isn't it Sasuke, this time it's me over you. I wish you wouldn't have forced my hand at this, he lifted his hand to Sasuke's eyes and closed his eyelids. Jobutsu Suru, Watashi no Yujin. Rest in peace, my friend. He said softly, as the pain in his eyes subsided before disappearing altogether. Naruto paid no attention to the chakra leaving his eyes, he turned to the last and true Uchiha on the face of the earth. Kayubi also didn't pay any attention to his cantainer's eyes. Listen Brad you still have to get rid of the man's annoying ability. Make the seal, be careful, because he won't let you. The kitsune said. The blonde barely had a word the fox said, but moved to do what he was planning to, which was to fortunately make the seal. The teen smirked and formed a cross seal with his fingers, to ju cage bunshin no jutsu. He muttered and summoned a thousand clones that with the Kayubi's single-tailed cloak, charged at the Uchiha. The elder was smirked and begun to show the blonde just why he was feared. If he had just become intangible and rushed the original it wouldn't have ruined his fun. The original Naruto used his enhanced speed and hightailed it out of there. Seconds after he left a large column of black flames shot up in the air. The memories of his clones made him work faster on his seal. Halfway through the seal Madara appeared behind him and tried to take his head off. It would have happened if Naruto didn't sense the man at the exact moment he appeared. He began jumping backwards, still drawing the seal as fast and as best as he could. He was cursing himself for spilling sake on his previous dimension seal, a couple of hours ago when he was on the cruise. He would have made another one, but yeah, mocha happened. Madara pursued his target and fired multiple fireballs and even a couple of air bullets at said target. The blonde dodged some of the techniques and used his tails to swat the Uchiha's body away, along with the rest of the techniques. The swat caused the man to bounce and skid along the ground. The blonde chuckled. These Uchiha did not know how to predict the movements of his chakra tails. He knew as soon as Madara recovered from the attack he was going to be pissed about it, just like Sasuke was, so he started gathering chakra in front of him. His ears twitched and he ducked, barely avoiding a bladed fan. He turned and kicked the man in his chest and rolled on the ground, thankful that he didn't mess up any of the ink for the seal. He resumed gathering the chakra and before he knew it he was finished charging up. He compressed the ball of chakra and ate it. Madara got back to his feet, he wasn't Naruto to retain his reflexes even after just fighting Sasuke. Playtime is over, it's time to end this little game. 
Naruto roared his chakra beam at the Uchiha and watched in satisfaction when the man was vaporized. He kept it up for as long as he could, just to make sure. He only had the beam up for at least a minute. He stopped the beam and dropped to his knees, dropping his paper and ink brush on the floor, where the ink began to travel along the paper. He had finished the seal, but what he didn't know was that it wasn't how it was supposed to be. Panting, he looked up to see Madara standing in the same spot, without any damage to his body. He suddenly gasped when his twin-tailed Yuki cloak dematerialized and he was left without the power of the Kyubi in sage mode. He grabbed the paper, not looking at it and charged towards the Uchiha, using lightning chakra to quicken his pace. Within a meter of the man, he heard two words he didn't think he would hear again. Shinra Tensai. He was immediately pushed back by an invisible force, now it was his turn to skid along the dirt. Naruto crouched to his knees and grunted in pain a broken left arm, a twisted right ankle, four cracked ribs on his right side and three broken ones on his left would do that to you. Not to mention the blood seeping into his right eye, from a jagged cut above his brow by a couple of rocks from when he was sliding on his face a moment ago. With his right eye shut he glared at the Uchiha, angry that he had such a technique when he thought only Nagato could do that because of his Rinnegan. He rose to his feet, using his left foot to support his weight. It was useless for the Kyubi to heal his wounds, due to the amount he already used and his body couldn't take any more of it. He let a minimal amount of lightning chakra surge through his body, focusing on the injured spots to numb the pain just a bit, it still hurt like a bitch though. He slowly bent down to pick the paper back up, not caring that it was dirty because it was still going to help finish off this menace once and for all. Madara had been watching his target for the past minute, studying him. He knew that he was exhausted from Sasuke and still had the stamina to fight. After seeing the blonde get up he had to give him some respect and the only one he has given respect on this level was Hashirama Senju, the Shodai Hokage. Panting at the exertion his body was going through, Naruto slowly started to limp over to Madara. He had a plan, it was going to cause much pain to his body and he hoped it worked. The Uchiha watched the blonde start limping towards him. This kid's tolerance for pain is incredible. He thought and his eyes widened when the brat disappeared. Naruto, using the power of lightning, rushed through the battlefield. He ran and thrust his arm towards the man and went right through him. Since he knew that was going to happen he continued for a little over 5 minutes. He was extremely tired now, and knew that if he stopped he was going to drop, so he kept going with this thought in mind. He was surprised that the next time he tried to slap the seal on Madara, said man moved out the way instead of allowing the blonde to go through him. That's it, he could only keep up his intangible ability for 5 minutes before he has to recharge. Kayubi, give me a little dose of chakra to surprise him and I could finally end this. Naruto said running towards the Uchiha, for what he wanted to be the last time. Madara was carefully dodging the blonde now and he was suffering from some anxiety since he was now vulnerable to his attacks. He was having a flashback to when he fought Conan, except this time he wasn't going to sacrifice his last remaining Sharingan eye to use Izanagi. If he did that all his planning would be for naught as he needed a Sharingan eye to cast onto the moon for his moon eye plan. He would have used Shinra Tensai again, but he was inexperienced in using the Rinnegan and because of that he could only use it every 5 minutes. He was going to do it now, but became surprised when Naruto went even faster than he was already going. Naruto appeared in front of the Uchiha in half a second and charged up his seal, ready to slap it on Madara's chest. The Uchiha was surprised that instead of the seal being placed on him a blinding flash of light occurred right in his face. He covered his eyes in pain since both his dujutsus were activated, while his Rinnegan couldn't be deactivated. He opened them to find nobody around him, he couldn't even fell Naruto's chakra around, none of it. He looked around not finding the blonde. After a while he became angered, son of a bitch, I just lost the fucking Kayubi. Fucking Sasuke, fucking Naruto. Fuck, Madara yelled. He looked at the sky, Zetsu find him, search everywhere. He commanded. Black Zetsu rose from the ground a meter away from him, yes Madara-sama. The black thing said before sinking back into the ground. The Uchiha stood around for a while longer, just seething in rage. Ah. He roared in anger, using Shinra Tensai and warping out of the area. Now the only thing in the air was a crater inside another crater. Shinobi Central Command, 
The four cages were having a war council. The case cage was absent due to being the commander of the army, and fighting with his own squad of shinobi. And speaking of the case cage, why the hell are we just sitting here? The case cage gets to fight with his people, why can't we fight with ours? The rakage yelled slamming his fist on the seal reinforced table. For once I agree with the rakage. We are wasting time, which is something we cannot afford, with Madara out there hunting for the lost Kayubi. I say capitalize on the Uchiha's absence and destroy this army of white, blob things. The Suchikage. The Rakage and the Suchikage exchanged looks and nodded to each other. The Mizukage rolled her eyes, you both need to calm down. We have business to discuss and we can't do it with you two complaining every few minutes. I know you want to get out there and fight with the others, I do too. But the little cutie is gaining war experience the longer he's out there by himself, with everyone depending on his orders. The auburn-haired female said leaning her hand on her right palm. And what would you know about leading armies into foreign territory? If I'm correct you gained your experience during a civil war, not to mention you've only been a cage for how long, the old man asked her. Listen, three of his cages have only been in the position for maybe three years tops due to certain circumstances. We all know you and Rakage Dono have been in this position and it far exceeds our own time in office. But that subject doesn't matter, what matters is what each of us can do to help our troops in defeating the enemy. Tsunade said entering the argument, you know what Hokage Dono, you're right, what we have to do as war experienced cages, is know what our enemy is going to do next. And this is why this war council has been called. The Mizukage said supporting her fellow female cage, the other cages grudgingly agreed and calmed down. Good now we can begin this meeting. Tsunade said making a few hand seals and a hologram image of the elemental nations appeared. Okay, according to our scouts, the Akatsuki base is here, she said pointing at a country in the middle of Taki no Kuni and Ta no Kuni. We are going to mobilize our troops through his own and gather around the base. We all know these white blobs are just the infantry in the army basically cannon fodder awaiting the slaughter. But word from our ambush squad says that the enemy has reawakened the use of Edo Tensai and has made these dead puppets even more dangerous than the ones my old teammate Orochimaru used. The specifics of just who was resurrected is a mystery, but I expect our troops to expect anybody and everybody. She said as a large cracking noise interrupted the meeting. Everyone looked at their teacups to see if it cracked. All of their eyes widened when all of them had a huge crack from top to bottom. It was a second later when the cups broke completely in half and the tea flowed out of the cups and onto the desk. They didn't pay much attention to the liquid because soon after that they all began to hear a rumble that shook the room. They looked in the middle of the desk to see a swirling ripple began to distort the air. Knowing who was appearing they each stood up. Soon Madara appeared, key leaking from his very soul causing the four cages to sweat a little at the actual weight of the intent. This key is more heavier than the last time we fought. The Sandame Suchikage mumbled under his breath. They each rose their head in confusion when they heard speaking. Where is he? The crazed Uchiha spoke menacingly. Tsunade gasped. Who? She simply said as anything else would cause her to faint. We don't know who you're talking about. The muscled rakage said trying to keep his composure. Don't lie to me. He yelled pushing the cages to the walls of the room, not using Shinra Tensai, but with the force of his chakra. Each of the cages hit a separate wall, on my hip. Yelled Oenoki as he felt the pain of a broken hip. The one-armed rakage didn't feel anything from hitting the wall thanks to his dense muscles. But he did get ready for a full-fledged fight. The Godem Mizukage slid to the floor, the wall behind her melting from the excess chakra she was leaking from her body. Tsunade hit the wall but wasn't allowed to slide to the floor as she felt herself being pulled by an unknown force. Her hazel brown eyes was met with both the Sharingan and Rinnegan eyes which surprised her. Tell me where you hit Uzumaki Naruto. I'll leave this timeline at this point, there's no point in continuing it. Everything is now irrelevant in what I'm trying to say. With Naruto, a battlefield during the second ninja world war. The first battle to be exact, as war just begun. This battlefield was where Naruto was found by a group of Junin. Sir we found this boy unconscious a couple of miles away from our border on Kumo's side. The leader Junin said laying the boy on the couch. The leader of Konoha was the Naidame Hokage, Senju Toborama. A young man who wore armor as white as his hair. 
He had red markings along his cheek line and light blue eyes. He folded his hands in front of him and glanced at the boy on his couch. He looks around the age of five, sending him to the orphanage would be useless at this time. Now is the time of war, I must see if he has what it takes to be a ninja. We'll wait until he regains consciousness to find out what he knows. In the meantime send him to the hospital for a checkup. Hi, they said as one picked the kid up and held him bridal style, before he jumped out the window, headed towards the hospital. The night aim stood, watching as his ninja escorted the young child. That kid has power deep within him, when he receives the right training Konoha would be unstoppable, he thought as a ninja entered his office. Mission accomplished Toborama sensei one Serutobi Hirazan said walking into the room. The man nodded, ah yes, how difficult was it for you to destroy one of Iwa's stronghold? Hirazan took a seat and leaned back a little. Well one would think doing something like that would be difficult when one is alone. But it was much easier, of course I was without the use of chakra for the duration of the mission. The mission was almost compromised when I witnessed a group of shinobi locate one of my traps. What happened after? They must have been retarded because they shrugged and continued patrolling, thinking the trap was one of theirs. They shared a short laugh and stood up. Great job my student, so do I understand you're finally going to take up one of your own genin team soon? Sarutobi nodded, that's correct, I feel it's finally time to pass down my knowledge. Who knows, they might become stronger than me one day. Konoha Hospital three days later. Beep beep, wh where am I? A young voice thought. Beep beep, what's that noise, it's annoying as hell. Beep beep, wait, w what happened to Madara? The machine started beeping faster. Beep beep beep, what's wrong with him? A voice was heard. I don't know, his heartbeat just went faster. A second voice said, whose voices are these? A are they experimenting on me? Or are they finally taking the Kyubi from me? Naruto thought, well don't just stand there help me. Naruto's eyes snapped open, the bright light blinding him don't touch me his voice was young but he didn't notice because it was a little hoarse he he's awake a female nurse stammered she has short light blue hair and light purple eyes she wore the standard nursing outfit she was in her late 20s her face was cute and her lips were tinged with blue her bust was a large d cup and her hips were fairly large leading to a large rump her figure was that of an average kunoichi and he could tell that nursing was just a part-time job, by the way she carried herself. But how, it was estimated that he was supposed to be out for at least another week. The second female nurse said, she was in her early 20s. She had brown hair with dark green eyes. She too, wore the standard nursing outfit. This nurse was different, she wore no lipstick and her brown hair was rather long. Her bust was a small B cup, and her hips were small, however she still had a nice butt. She spent her life being a nurse, with no amount of ninja training. Naruto was confused, what do you mean, where am I? He asked, in the village hidden in the leaves. The Naidame said walking in the room. Naruto looked at the door to see the Naidame Hokage. His eyes widened his face pale and he didn't pay attention to what the man said. Am I dead? He asked gulping loudly. Confusion showed on the faces of Tobarama and the nurses. Wake the furball, he closed his eyes. Furball where are you? He yelled in his mind. With no response his eyes snapped open. What's wrong child? The blonde leveled a glare at the man. I am not a child. The brown haired nurse grabbed a nearby hand mirror and showed Naruto his reflection. Holy fuck I'm a child. He yelled just now noticing how small his entire body was. What the fuck happened to me? He whispered under his breath. He began to have a flashback to the last thing that happened. I remember now, I killed Sasuke. Was I unable to kill Madara with him? He then began to remember his friend. Sasuke I'm sorry again for having to take your life. His eyes began to burn like the time after he killed Sasuke. The blonde began to furiously rub his eyes, causing the nurses to panic. What's wrong with your eyes, child? The purple-eyed nurse asked. They're burning, the blonde answered the question. The senju moved closer to the boy, show me your eyes. He spoke sternly. Naruto spent the next two minutes rubbing his eyes, before the pain started to lessen. He slowly began to open his eyes, causing the Hokage to reel back in shock. What's wrong? Naruto asked curiously. Yo your eyes? The sight of the surprised Hokage surprised the occupants in the room. My eyes? 
Naruto thought terrified about what he might learn. He reached for the mirror on his lap and slowly rose it to eye level, keeping his eyes closed. After taking a deep breath he opened his eyes. The first thing he saw in his new eyes was the ripple-like pattern effect around his pupil and a light purple iris and sclera. Ah damn it, that explains why my eyes were hurting. I have the Rinnegan, he muttered. Naruto sat in a classroom, inside of the academy for ninjas in training, a week after resting in the hospital. Of course he had been questioned by the Nidame about where he had come from, but he feigned ignorance about his origin. Since, obviously he had no clue about how he had even got here in the first place. And what's worse he had to attend the academy, yet again. He didn't want to go to the academy again, but Toborama had already spoke with the sensei about his enrollment, so it was out of his power. The blonde was obviously agitated, back in his time history was his absolute worst subject, more so than math. And now he's back in time so you can obviously see his dilemma. I hate history, I hate history, I hate history, he continued to say in his mind before a dim light bulb went off in his head. Wait a minute, I am history, he thought as tears came to his eyes. He fought back a sniff as the sensei walked in and began writing on the board. The blonde had met with the sensei a couple days ago, when the man had visited him in the hospital when the Hokage had first spoke to him. Of course nothing was said about his bloodline, as absolutely none of them had an idea about where it came from, excluding Naruto who had an inkling about where it came from. Said sensei was a man, a junin, judging by his junin style flag jacket. He was in his early twenties, he had black hair and a serious look on his face that wasn't worn when he met with Naruto. My name is Uchu Ryoko, as you know we are at war with two of the five great nations, consisting of both Iwagakure and Kumogakure and a couple of small insignificant villages. We have our newest ally Sanagakure to help us, but the tide in this war could easily be shifted when Mizugakure gets forced into the conflict. Whatever side they join would have the upper hand in this war. But fear not, for we are in the village of Konoha and if we survived the last war we can definitely survive this one. He said his face softening up as he pumped his fist in the air. The students responded in kind and pumped their own little fists. Even Naruto pumped his fist, his national pride not wavering with the time travel. Now let's begin with introductions, starting with you. Ryoko said pointing at Naruto. You didn't tell me your name when we met in the hospital but now, he said smirking, introduce yourself. The blonde stood to his feet, hello fellow classmates, my name is Yuzwanki Naruto. I don't know where I came from but I do know that I was found about 15 miles outside of Hai no Kuni. I don't know who my parents are, but all they left me is my name. He said telling them half of the truth, since until recently all he had from his parents was his name. The teacher held his hand up, stopping the blonde from continuing. That's enough child, all I wanted was your name. He said studying him as if he had heard that name from somewhere, it was at the tip of his tongue but he couldn't remember. He dropped the issue and focused on the class as a whole. Now as this is a new batch of students I would like each of you to stand and tell me your name. He said pointing to the first student. Naruto began sitting down, he looked around the room, before he noticed a blonde girl staring at him. She looked oddly familiar as he blue eyes bore into recognizable hazel eyes. He turned his head and looked out the window. Listening to the students begin to tell their names caused his mind to drift. When that happened he began to think about his possession of the Rinnegan and the disappearance of the Kyubi. He remembered reading his mother's journal, it said that this ancient bloodline only came to the most unique of the Uzumaki clan. But Nagato had it, did that mean that he was an Uzumaki? And what exactly happened to the Kyubi? Naruto thought as his ears picked up the calling of another student. My name is Senju Tsunade, she simply said as she sat back down. Naruto focused on the class and there she was, the same girl that he had shared a short staring contest with. Now that he got a second look, he could completely recognize her. She was a young, really young version of Tsunade. She had the same light blonde hair, except it was short and in a small single ponytail. She was wearing a gray shirt that didn't contain any assets, unlike the one she wears when she gets older, that contains just about the biggest pair of marshmallows known to man. Her hazel eyes were filled with both the love of living with her parents and her grand uncle, who was the Nidame in confusion about the blonde across the room. Her pants were dark green and she wore basic ninja sandals. 
When he began to feel amazed by her young looks he shook his head and forced himself not to slap himself. Of course she was young, she was only five years old. She really did look like a complete contrast of the Tsunade he knew and loved. But now presented with the opportunity to witness the growth of Tsunade was making him not regret coming back in time. He shook his head again, stop thinking about your surrogate mother like that, he said in his mind. But this opportunity is the best that ever happened, maybe now she could become more than a mother, he thought again as his inner pervert began fighting his outer righteousness. He stopped his inner battle when he heard Jiraiya introduce himself. He looked the same, kind of. The only difference was the red marks on his cheeks were non-existent. He also doubted the kid was a lecher like his older self. Eero Senen, Naruto thought keeping tears from falling from his eyes as he looked at his sensei. And then it was Orochimaru. Either Naruto's mind was playing tricks on him or did Orochimaru actually look kind in appearance. And the polite way he introduced himself was way too sophisticated. The blonde scowled thinking it was a trick as Orochimaru could never be nice. The scowl left his face only for it to be replaced with a temporary surprised visage at seeing the legendary Sanin so young and weak, at the moment. This just added to the proof that he somehow traveled back in time. It wasn't Madara's doing as he didn't specialize in time but dimensions. Wait does his time-space ninjutsu count? Naruto thought offhandedly. Alright class that's enough for today. I expect you here tomorrow for a much longer day, when I will begin your training, he said seeing some of his students groan in displeasure. Now, now, none of that. This war demands more ninjas to fight our adversaries and that's where I come in. I'm here to whip you children into battle-ready ninjas. He said dismissing the class, his students looking forward to enjoying their last peaceful day. Naruto walked out of the class with a thoughtful look on his face. His inner furball hadn't said a single thing or even made a single noise since he came to this time. Hey furball are you in there? The blonde yelled in his mind. No answer, just like the other times. Maybe he needed to go into his mindscape and confront the giant manifestation of chakra. But now wasn't the time to worry about the fox. Now was the time to find a place of residence since he couldn't stay in the hospital forever, no matter how nice the nurses were. He headed to the only place where said residence was going to be given to him at his age. Naruto appeared at the Hokage Tower realizing that with the memory, his skills also remained. The blonde was beyond ecstatic, he didn't have to worry about staying in the academy, if he already had the same skills that prevented him from losing the fight against Sasuke and lasting as long as he did against Madara. That made him think about the past as he walked into the building. No, not the past, the future, but also his past, or future. Naruto shook his head of the confusing thoughts and walked into the office with a beastly grin. Hey old man, Tobarama looked at Naruto with a shocked look on his face. The other occupant in the room chuckled at the greeting. It seems he's more exuberant than you led on Tobarama sensei The young sage looked at the other occupant to see a far younger version of the grandfather figure in his past life. Gigi, he thought keeping the grin on his face and preventing tears from falling to the floor. Naruto-kun, what have I told you about calling me that? I'm not even old, Tobarama said resting his chin on one of his hands. Naruto smiled at seeing both of his, Gigi's, well compared to my age, you're pretty old. He said smiling wider, we do have about a 25 gap in our ages, unless you're not 30 like you told me. He said slightly bouncing on the balls of his feet. Hiruzen looked at the young sage in slight amazement. Are you sure you're only five? He said chuckling at his own question. Oh you have no idea. Naruto thought smiling even wider and that was possible. Tobarama let out a big sigh. Forget about what his age could be. Ooh where are my manners? Naruto this Serutobi Hiruzen. Me and my brother have taught him everything he knows. Hiruzen this is Uzumaki Naruto-kun. The child I told you about. Serutobi looked at Naruto in thought. Hum, Naruto-kun. Do you know anything about Uzumaki Mito? He asked getting a confused look out of the blonde. Never mind Naruto-kun, forget I asked you. He said leaning back into his chair, keeping his other question out of his mind since it wasn't his business. Tobarama could see that the child didn't have an idea about anybody from his own clan, so he decided to change the subject. So Naruto-kun, what are you doing here? The blonde looked at the cage, I don't have a place to stay. I came here to ask for an apartment for myself. The two adults looked at Naruto before sharing a look. 
After a short second they began to laugh. This irritated Naruto for obvious reasons. Why are you laughing this isn't funny. He yelled with his Rinnegan blazing to life, radiating in anger, and a weird and dangerous silvery aura surrounded Naruto. The current and future cages stopped their laughter when they literally seen the misty aura appear around the oblivious blonde. Calm down Naruto-kun. We just find it amusing that a child your age wants to live by themselves, and sort of awkward. Now you're not staying by yourself. The Nidame said. The Rinnegan and the aura disappeared as Naruto let out a nervous chuckle. Yeah that is awkward isn't it? He said rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. But, where else can I stay other th? He stopped when he noticed the cage's smile was getting bigger the more he said. You're not thinking what I think you're thinking are you? After a nod of the cage's head the blonde shook his. No disrespect Hokage-sama but I decline your offer. The blonde said crossing his arms. Tobarama smirked at the blonde, nonsense, I've already completed the paperwork. All I need is your signature. He said opening his drawer and taking out a piece of paper. Here you go, just sign at the X's. He said giving Naruto a pen. I still decline, I don't want to impose on you and your family. He said leaving the paper in front of him. You're not, it's only me, my nephew and his wife and my grandniece. He said smiling softly. You mean, he said before the door behind him opened and a young Tsunade ran to her uncle. Oji-san, she said running straight to her granduncle, hopping over Naruto in the desk and landed right on his chest, and proceeded to hug the life out of him. Oomph, he grunted as Tsunade landed on his chest. Su-chan, how was your first day at the academy, he asked. Nothing really interesting happened, but there was this other blonde boy that had an even more interesting surname. What was it again? She murmured putting a finger to her chin in thought. Uzumaki, Naruto said knowing he was the one she was talking about. She turned her hazel eyes towards him and gasped in surprised at seeing him again so soon. What are you doing here? She asked turning her body to sit on her granduncle's lap. Naruto began to sit up slowly remembering the temper Tsunade had from his time, and wondered, no hope it didn't come to the surface now. Well you see, there's a funny story about that, he said looking at Tobarama silently asking for help. Really a funny story, can I hear? She asked oblivious about his odd behavior. Well you see Tsunade-chan, Naruto-kun here is going to be staying with us. The Hokage said. Why? She screamed. I didn't actually sign the paper yet Tsunade-san. The blonde boy said. Well good don't. It's not that easy Su-chan. I want Naruto-kun to live with a family and I don't like you being too lonely in the house. Tobarama said. I'm not alone, I have two San and Kachan. She whined. And plus he could live with Mito San, she's an Uzumaki. She said looking at her granduncle. That's a negative Su Chan. Naruto here doesn't know about Mito San or his clan. He explained. Hiruzen had been watching the scene and knew he had to think of something before things got out of hand and soon he got an idea. How about I take Naruto kun into my house? Interrupting the small argument between granduncle and grandniece. All eyes turned to Serutobi, really Serutobi-san. Naruto said hoping his old grandfather figure was serious about his offer. He nodded, sure, just because I'm 20 doesn't mean I don't know how to take care of a kid. Plus after the death of mother and father in the last war, I can sympathize with the little blonde. He said leaning over to rub Naruto's head. Said blonde squirmed out from under the man's hand and smiled at Tobarama. I agree with that idea, can I please? He pleaded at the Nidame with Tsunade joining in. The Nidame closed his eyes and shook his head. This caused the blondes to look at each other and nod. When the Nidame opened his eyes two puppy dog-eyed jutsus were upon him. One pair of teary hazel eyes and one pair of ocean blue eyes. Oh no my only weakness. He thought before he dropped his head and sighed in defeat. The two blondes cheered and would have high-fived, but they were too far apart from each other. Sarutobi chuckled thinking back to how this playful blonde was not even 10 minutes ago. Such a strong aura and that odd dujutsu of his, I must find out more about it. He thought watching as Tobarama made a new document and they all signed it. The streets of Konoha, the happy young sage was walking through the village with Serutobi at his side. He was even more amazed at all the people walking in the village, since this was obviously before the second and third wars and the Kayubi reduced the population. This brought his attention back to the subject of the fox, since he was back in time did its chakra or mind or something go back to the body in this time or what? 
When are we going to get to your house? He asked looking at Saritobi. Hiruzen smiled, what do you mean, we're there? He said walking towards a two-story house. I recently moved out of the small compound, because even with its size, it was too big for one person. He explained opening his door. The house was simple, medium-sized living room, large kitchen with an island dining table, two bathrooms, three bedrooms and a study, library. Don't you think it's like the same thing? Naruto asked. Hum, what do you mean? Well you moved out of a compound, only to move into a large house. Don't you think it's the same thing? Naruto asked yawning a little. Sarutobi walked into the kitchen to get some water, hum I guess you're right. Yet again you surprise me, he said walking into the living room to find Naruto sleep on the couch. Hiruzen smiled and brought a spare blanket from his closet and draped it over the child's body. He rubbed his head and walked up the stairs to fix up the guest room for his new, oh tuto. Naruto's Mindscape Naruto walked through his mindscape after falling asleep on the couch. It was the only opportunity he had to literally jump into his mind. He walked around in the murky water, he looked down into his reflection to see his 17-year-old self. This was further proved when he noticed he was taller and his hands were bigger. He focused on his eyes to see the Rinnegan, seeing it in this form was weirder than seeing it in his younger self. He looked around and noticed the pipes that signified his chakra pathways were much larger and glowed silver with tinges of blue. I don't remember my chakra being that color, but then again, it seems right for some reason, he thought as he continued walking in his mindscape. The more he walked the more perplexed he became, by this time he could hear the fox either calling him toward the caged room or its snoring. But now it was silent and that put him on edge. He walked into the room to see the cage, but there was nothing behind it. He squinted his eyes at the cage and he could barely make out the outline of the fox's body. After having it in his sights it became fully visible. It looked sleep, but he could tell something else was wrong with it. He took a step and was shocked to feel a small earthquake. He was even more shocked to see the figure of the fox breaking down, collapsing onto the floor. Soon all that remained was darkness, the remains of the fox fully disintegrated, and Naruto, who was completely speechless. Sochi, is that you? A voice asked from, what seemed like everywhere. The blonde became alert and he jumped back and willed everything around him to turn to a sunlight clearing, with absolutely no trees to hide behind. He looked around for the intruder, keeping the amazement off his face at the sudden change in the area. He turned completely around to see a woman behind him and that's when he remembered what the oddly familiar woman said to him. Son, he thought taking a closer look at the woman to fully realize that she was indeed his mother. H how did you get in my mind? What happened to the Kayubi just now? How did the area turn like this? Why did I have the Rinnegan? He nearly screamed the last question at her. Kashina walked to her son, her flaming red hair blowing in a non-existent wind. She wore a plain red kimono that hid a full pair of C-cup breast and a black obi tied around her waist. The blonde noticed that said waist was slimmer than the hologram he witnessed at his father's house, back in the original time. She was barefoot, allowing the grass to tickle her feet. She smiled at the barrage of questions and tears prickled at the corners of her eyes, one question at a time. She said before engulfing her son in a hug. At first the blonde relaxed into his mother's embrace but anger bubbled to the surface. He grabbed her shoulders and pushed her back a little, keeping a hold of her. Do you have any idea about what kind of life I've lived? How dare you act like you haven't deserted me? He said letting go of her and taking a step backward. I've had about the worst childhood in the history of Konoha, and it's all your fault. He spoke to her between clenched teeth, it being the only thing keeping him from lashing out. The tears fell from the mother's eye before she sniffled, her own anger rising to the surface, you really think it's my fault for dying. How selfish of you to think something like that. You have no idea what I went through to get into the position I'm in at the moment. She told her son, her tone being borderline murderous, she was that mad at her son. You really think I wanted to leave a baby, my infant son, alone in a village, that I knew was going to hate you? With you being the host of the demon that just killed most of their loved ones, it's guaranteed that they'll resent you. She scowled at him. This angered Naruto more than it should have, and he activated his Rinnegan in anger. Kashina smirked at seeing the Uzumaki bloodline in her son, the smirk being more prideful. It seems I touched a nerve somehow, well let's see if you know how to use those legendary eyes. She said getting into a stance. My thoughts exactly? 
Naruto said running straight at his mother. One mind hour later, the crimson-haired mother stood over her child softly shaking her head. You did pretty good, your only strength was your regular skills. Your skills with your eyes was absolutely horrendous. By the time I was your age I had already mastered the different techniques these eyes had to offer. She said, after the short fight with his mother, Naruto, whose body was covered in cuts and bruises, couldn't find the energy to move his limbs. He stayed laying on the floor looking at the cloudless sky. The apparent anger he held for his mother had ended along with the fight. He turned his head to look his mother, whose body was without a single scoff. Of course, I just received these new eyes of mine. Wait, what do you mean you mastered these eyes? He asked bolting to his feet, surprising his mother. How is he moving so soon after the beating he just endured? She asked herself. She was brought back to reality when she heard the question being asked again. It seems you still don't understand. She said shaking her head before a force pushed Naruto back. Naruto's body was flung across the field before it landed making a small crater. The blonde, yet again, watched the cloudless sky. I am so tired of that technique. He thought as his mother appeared in his vision. You see son, these eyes only show up in a few shinobis of the Uzumaki clan. Only five others have ever had the privilege of having these eyes in the last 200 years. She spoke extending a hand to help her son up. Naruto reached for said hand, that still doesn't explain what happened to the Kayubi, or why I have these eyes. He said standing to his feet. She shrugged her shoulders, apparently you are of the select few, which is untold of. A parent with the eyes breeds another with the eyes, it's even more amazing that this happened. What happened to the Kayubi, I have no idea. If I was to take an educated guess, I would have to say with the activation of your eyes you've unlocked the seal and fully absorbed the beast. She said as trees were added to the clearing. Naruto pondered on what his mother told him before he got another question, but if I absorbed the Kayubi shouldn't my chakra be crimson or blue? Why is it silver? He asked leaning against a tree. Does it look like I have all the answers? She snapped scaring her son. She covered her mouth and blushed in embarrassment, sorry short fuse. The blonde sighed as he shook his head, that's my mother all right. He thought remembering his own short fuse, until he thought of something, wait, since I'm back in time, am I still your son or what? He asked getting a confused look out of her. Am I never wondered about, technically you'll be older than me by the time I have you, that is if you don't change history or anything. She said mumbling the last part. Well still does it look lick. Yeah yeah yeah. He said interrupting her with a wave of his hand. Okay I have a question you can answer, too actually. What are you doing in my mind and just what did you do to get here? He asked crossing his arms. Kashina crossed her own arms under her breast. The reason I'm in your mind is to teach you how to use your Rinnegan. Exactly how I got here is a story for another day. She said chuckling at the look Naruto gave her. Now is the time for your mind to rest along with your body, I'll see you again my son. She said as Naruto faded from view. Real world the next day. Naruto woke up with a yawn, forgetting about the trip to his mind, as the scent of bacon and eggs invaded his nostrils. He looked around and found himself inside of a plain looking room, laying in a bed far bigger than his body. He looked down to see that he was in the same attire from yesterday. He got out of the bed to notice a pair of dark gray training sweats and a tight and sleeveless light gray shirt. His stomach growled and he promptly took a quick bath and changed into the gray clothing. They felt a little loose on him, but he just shrugged his shoulders and walked downstairs. Thinking of a good prank he lowered his chakra signature and stealthily sneaked up to Serutobi. Good morning Naruto-kun, I see your energy has returned with the nap you took said brown-haired man said turning around and popping the young blonde on the head with a spatula. Itai, Naruto said rubbing his head, that hurt, why'd you do that? He said with tears approaching the edges of his eyes. Hiruzen smiled at the young child in front of him. Nice try Naruto-kun, I'm not going to fall for that. Unlike sensei, I'm immune to that. He said turning back to the cooking food. That was close, any longer and I would have apologized. He thought as Naruto grumpily walked to the dining table. So what's the plan for today? Naruto asked as Hiruzen set a plate of bacon and eggs in front of him. Well, you're going to go to the academy, and I'm going to get ready for a mission. Sarutobi said as a messenger hawk began to peck on the kitchen window. The blonde groaned, remembering about having to go to school. He quickly ate his breakfast and exited the house. 
he found himself in the section of the village where the clans of said village resided. Of course, the Serutobi clan, even though Hirazan is the last one, it was still considered a clan in the eyes of the village. Only because of the strength wielded by Hirazan. The point being, he was on the other side of the village, far away from the academy. Luckily he had an hour before eight. The blonde gave a small smirk as he used a shunshin to vanish from his spot. Unknowingly someone had watched the blonde's little exit. One Hirazan had been watching his surrogate little brother through the window and was a little surprised to see said blonde vanish with a C-rank supplementary technique. A child shouldn't be able to do that technique, let alone even mold chakra. Who exactly are you Uzumaki Naruto, he thought. Training ground 7. Naruto walked into the training ground, finding it empty. Well not entirely, one young Orochimaru was seen punching one of the newly placed logs. Naruto tried not to sneer but, said sneer just happened to creep onto his face. The blonde wanted nothing but to just kill the future s rank criminal. He was preventing from doing so, when Orochimaru turned around. Oh, I didn't realize I had an audience. Hey you're the Uzumaki kid, it's a pleasure to meet you personally. He said walking up to Naruto and extending a hand. The blonde wanted so much to be rude and leave him hanging but he had sort of an epiphany. Maybe he could prevent Orochimaru from ever becoming evil, and he'll become an ally in the future. He smiled and extended his own hand, shaking the hand of what he wanted to be a sure comrade. And you're, Orochimaru, it too is a pleasure to meet one such as yourself. The blonde spoke to the pale child. Though Orochimaru was dressed in a noble-looking kimono, he was outside in the dirt, training to get stronger. At the moment Orochimaru didn't resemble anything dealing with nobility. So are you here to watch me train or are you up for a little sparring match, to test skills, of course? He spoke taking a few steps back. That is if you have the skills. He added bouncing on the balls of his feet and relaxed into a ready stance. The blonde smirked, cocky little brat. He thought as he began studying the young fighter in front of him. Based from what he knew about the adult version, Orochimaru was very slippery like any other snake would be. But this Orochimaru was different. The adult was always anticipating the moves of his opponent and was a master strategist, on the level of any Nara. This version wasn't any different, was he? After a minute the blonde finally slid into a stiff stance, not ready to reveal any of his skills at the moment. A, come hither, motion later and Orochimaru charged at the blonde. Naruto waited until the last moment to relax his stance and shuffle to the right, narrowly dodging a punch. Apparently he didn't move far enough as Orochimaru dropped and swept him under his feet. Naruto acted fast and shot a hand to the ground and reinforced it with chakra before using it to push off the ground. He vaulted himself a few feet back and landed on his feet. As he landed Orochimaru was already on him, sending punches and kicks that were all blocked or dodged. I think I spoke too soon. My taijutsu isn't as good as I thought it would be, must be because of the small body. He thought catching a kick and picking Orochimaru up and throwing him across the field. Five minutes had passed in the fight and Naruto could tell that Orochimaru was just getting started. With a few hand seals, three copies of Orochimaru appear. Let's see if you can handle this. He spoke as the three copied children charged. Naruto smirked letting his Rinnegan flash into existence only for a second. He himself charged, but instead of going for the one in the middle, he veered to the left and sent a punch that knocked the unsuspecting Orochimaru to the ground, the other two clones disappearing from existence. My Rinnegan was able to determine which ones were the fakes and which one was real in such a short amount of time. I love this thing, he thought staring at the boy on the ground. Other than a small amount of blood leaking from his lip, nothing else was visibly wrong with him. Sorry about that, I got a little carried away. Naruto said extending a hand. Orochimaru shook his head, no apology needed, this just showed me that I need to work on my taijutsu more. He said allowing Naruto to help him up. And plus I just need to learn to dodge your wicked left hook. He said as they shared a laugh. Well I must be on my way, I don't want to show up at the academy looking like this. He said trying and failing to brush the dirt from his kimono. I see you later Naruto. He said running back to the village. Naruto sighed looking down at his own gear. It wasn't as dirty as he thought it would be, maybe because he never hit the floor like Orochimaru did. He was a little sweaty though, but that was nothing. Ten minutes later, 
The blonde had been walking around for about 10 minutes before he found himself at a spot he spent a lot of time at. Except there was one important thing mission. Where the fuck is the Ichiraku ramen stand? He screamed in his head. Surely I believed Tuchi and Serutobi were the same age. He thought as he witnessed a short boy walking with his father. Said father was walking the boy to civilian school. And Naruto's ears heard the words, Are you ready for school Tuchi-kun? And a response, Hi Tusan. Naruto felt like pulling his hair out, he didn't know how long he'd last without the best ramen in the world not existing yet. Classic anime tears fell down his face as he solemnly trudged his way to the academy. With his current pace it took him a while to enter his classroom. As soon as he sat in his seat his head dropped onto the desk, sounding a loud thud in the class. The class wasn't full, but there were a few students in there, including Tsunade. They all watched Naruto not knowing what was the matter. When Naruto felt a hand on his shoulder he looked up to see Orochimaru there smiling at him. What's the matter with you? You should be happy you defeated me, because it won't ever happen again. He said chuckling as he sat down. Naruto smiled, yeah sure, because my win against you was a total fluke. He said with sarcasm practically dripping from his voice. Orochimaru smirked, you damn rig wait. He said his smirk dropping from his face as everyone heard a loud noise. The children turned around to see Jiraiya on his face and a wisp of smoke around him. Naruto looked at the wooden floor to see a long scratch from one of Jiraiya's gettas. Poor Arrow Senen, I hope this doesn't get worse. The blonde thought as Jiraiya wiped his face and quickly appeared behind Tsunade, surprising the blonde at his speed. Oh Su-chan, please don't pay attention to what just happened. You know you deserve only the best of entrances, babe. He said taking the female blonde's hand and kissing it. Well that would have happened, if Tsunade didn't use righteous female fury to punch him. A hit that sent him out of the open window, that was on the second floor. I don't even know you lecher, she said rising a fist at the open window. Naruto's eyes widened at the event, holy crap, it's just like always. Well at least we weren't on the third floor. Naruto sighed shaking his head. Shortly after the teacher walked in the room with Jiraiya on his shoulder. What just happened? He asked setting Jiraiya down. The white-haired child didn't have a scuff of dirt on him, except from when he fell on the floor and his bruised cheek. Sensei must have caught him. Everyone thought the same thing. Well a long story short, the dobi was being a pervert. Orochimaru said. Naruto cringed a little at hearing that word, what do you mean, the year just started. Orochimaru shrugged his shoulders, be that as it may, I could already tell he's going to be dead last this year. Naruto shook his head, you never know, a dead last could become a Hokage if he has the proper training. He said knowing not to affect what happens to Jiraiya's training, due to him becoming a cage level ninja in the future. Really, you think I can become that strong? Jiraiya asked with hope in his eyes. Naruto looked at Jiraiya, staring into his eyes and recognized the look. The need for positive assurance, the look of determination and a hint of hope. The blonde remembered that Jiraiya was an orphan as well and needed this boost of self-esteem. With a nod of the blonde's head, Jiraiya smiled brightly and looked at his sensei, I'm ready for whatever you throw at me. He said confidently. Ryoko's eyes went from Jiraiya to Naruto's to think, he had that kind of ability, to bring anybody's self-confidence to the surface. A true morale booster, possibly leadership material. He smiled as he turned around and walked to the front of the class. Excellent, I shall begin your training now. Trust me, you'll stop hating me when it's finished. He said vaguely as all the students took a loud gulp. Oh please how bad can it be? It's going to be a piece of cake. Naruto unknowingly thought out loud. It was too late as he realized his mistake. Ryoko smirked, oh really? He said chuckling darkly. One year later, currently the blonde was evading the strikes of three students, Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Orochimaru. Each of the students were wearing dark gray training pants, Naruto was wearing a very dark orange shirt, Tsunade was wearing a dark green blouse, Jiraiya was wearing a dark red shirt and Orochimaru was a wearing dark blue shirt. Of course the colors had a purpose as Naruto dodged another strike and kicked Jiraiya in the stomach. Red, Ryoko yelled. The male blonde released a small sigh of release as he charged at Jiraiya, along with the rest of the participants. Tsunade was the first to approach Jiraiya, sending a punch his way. In desperation for his life, Jiraiya quickly formed a seal before the fist connected with his face. 
A wooden log replaced the white-haired child. A large dent with multiple cracks appeared on the dense log from Tsunade's punch. Jiraiya appeared in the air behind Orochimaru, kicking at his head. Said child used his snake-like ability and ducked his head under the approaching leg and twisted his body around and grabbed the other foot and slammed Jiraiya to the floor. Sadly for Orochimaru the body vanished into another log. He couldn't react in time to dodge the next punch. Fortunately he was protected by Naruto, who caught the punch that would have connected with Orochimaru's head. Amazing job protecting your teammate. The male blonde heard his teacher yell from the sidelines. Naruto didn't have time to congratulate himself on the praise as Jiraiya tossed him over his shoulder and quickly swept Orochimaru's feet from under him. Tsunade, who was about to punch Jiraiya, stopped as she heard her sensei yelled, Blue. This time it was Orochimaru's turn to evade the his classmates. He quickly pushed himself off the ground and formed the ram seal. Shortly after eight clones appeared around him, which one is the real me, he said. Jiraiya and Tsunade each turned to Naruto, who always could see through these kinds of tricks. They were surprised to not see him in their sights. Currently Naruto was in the air, having used chakra to rocket himself into the air to prevent any of them from seeing his eyes. He smirked, just because they're not regular clones doesn't mean you could evade my eyes. He said softly deactivating his Rinnegan, which he had extreme training for. Attack the one on the far right. He yelled to his teammates as he dropped on the far left and began destroying the earth clones, with his hands inked in electricity. The sensei Ryoko stood from the sidelines with a proud smile on his face as he watched his absolute best students training in this team exercise. I don't need to explain the exercise do I? It was obvious that these students mostly benefited from his intense training, the others didn't stay that long after the amount of injuries they sustained. It truly is a shame, he thought looking at his other students, none of them were special like the four on the training field. They didn't have the mindset to go into the battlefield and truly, they're not entirely battle ready at the moment. They're only children after all, but these four are something else entirely. He thought returning his gaze to the training field, green. He yelled seeing Tsunade not become on the defensive. After five more minutes of Tsunade defending herself and evading every possible hit, Ryoko ended the training. Excellent, truly amazing, you four are truly my greatest Kree I mean pupils. He said chuckling. Now for evaluations, Tsunade, being a girl, I wanted to lighten your training a bit, but I'm glad you forced me not to. You truly are reaping the benefits of my training. Jiraiya, that booster in the beginning of the year was just what you needed to rise up from being a loser in the eyes of your classmates. Orochimaru, a genius in the eyes of many a prodigy in the eyes of the rest of true ninja of the era. Lastly Naruto, I believed you were all talk, but you have proven me wrong with your strategies for battle and whenever things would go wrong, you were always able to think on your feet and that is exactly what is needed on the battlefield. I would pass each of you, if I could, he spoke confusing his students. What do you mean sensei? Tsunade asked. Of course you could pass us, we're too good to sit in a classroom. Jiraiya said puffing out his chest. Believe it or not, I agree with the pervert on this one. Orochimaru said. Hey, I'm not just a pervert. Jiraiya said. Jiraiya don't, Naruto tried to say but it was too late as he, Tsunade, and Orochimaru covered their ears and closed their eyes. I'm a super pervert. Jiraiya yelled with huge fireworks erupting out of nowhere. Jiraiya stood in a pose with the peace sign high in the air. Ryoko stood with a tick mark on his head, he promptly smacked the child in the back of the head, what have I said about being an idiot? He said running a hand through his hair to relieve a bit of his frustration. He let out a huge sigh, like I was saying, I can't graduate all four of you unless you pass the graduation test in a few years. Also, never in history, has there been a five-man cell so you four won't be able to be together anyway. He said, Oh, I beg to differ. A voice was heard, Hokage-sama, Ryoko said once he turned around to see whoever disturbed his class. Wa what are you doing here Hokage-sama? He asked. The Naidame and Serutobi were seen walking up to the small group. Oh I was just in the neighborhood and wanted to check on my grandniece and her friends, when I heard what he said. He said stopping in front of said girl to rub her head. What exactly does that mean? Naruto said softly smiling noticing the twinkle in his Nissan's eyes. It means that I have decided to take all four of you as my students. Congratulations you four will become legends. 
Here is and said crossing his arms as Naruto cheered, taking his dark orange shirt off and tossed it in the air, before running at the professor. The shirt thudded to the ground with a loud thud. This didn't surprise the class but it did surprise Ryoko. Wait Naruto, how much does your shirt weigh? Said Senesi said walking up to said shirt. The male blonde inwardly cussed himself out for forgetting, a uh, 15 pounds like everybody else's. He said, Ryoko stared into Naruto's eyes, you're lying to me, he simply said picking up the shirt. Now tell me, Naruto mumbled the answer, excuse me? Ryoko asked, I said 55. The sensei shook his head, do you understand how reckless that is? You could have injured yourself beyond repair with that much weight, weighing down your small body. He said, at the age of 6, Naruto was very much in shape. His body was very lean and muscular, with a little fat, from the large amounts of food he eats to keep his energy. He kept the perfect balance between muscle and fat. Currently the silver-haired warrior was inside of his mindscape. He was having another training session with his mother. But this spar was different than the others, it was the last. He wore black cargo pants and a dark green shirt. He wore his black clothed headband around his waist like a belt. The metal plate was held right in front of the pants acting much like a belt buckle. His silver hair had grown to reach the middle of his back. But you can still see some streaks of yellow in random places in the hair. Fortunately his eyes remained their original electric blue color. You would easily be able to see the blue eyes if they were currently that color. At the moment they were a very light purple, bore lining on gray, with a ripple effect design. The color of his bloodline, the Rinnegan. I can't believe that is going to be the last time we see each other Ka-san. It seems like it was only yesterday when we first met. Which reminds me, there are some questions you have yet to answer. He said eyeing his mother. Across from him was said mother, her eyes resembling his. She wore an old-fashioned kunoichi outfit, excluding the armored shinobi mask. Her outfit was the natural black. She also wore straw sandals and black socks. Her long red hair flowed down her back much like her son's own silver hair. I know son and I will answer those questions before I go. Now is the time we fight. She said as the large field of grass rose higher than the two stealth fighters. After the grass stopped rising, trees started growing. With all the growing going on, the mindscape was soon turned into a praise nightmare. But which one of these fighters is the real predator? After the mindscape finished its transformation, Naruto rocketed through the tall grass. His Rinnegan told him that the grass around him was filled with chakra. It was his and his mother's jobs to find each other through all of the chakra riddle forestry. This is nothing, I've done this dozens of times. I'll find her in no time. He thought to himself before jumping out of the tall grass and used his eyes to focus on his mother's moving chakra. Kashina appeared behind Naruto and kicked at his head. The boy ducked under the swipe and quickly grabbed her leg. This is a water clone. Unimportant, but relatively annoying, he thought as his eyes got a good look at the female. You're going to have to try harder than that Maher, he said slamming the clone on the branch, making it splinter and nearly break in half. The clone then proceeded to splash back into its liquid form. Naruto stood to his full height, 4 feet and 7 inches. He looked down to see a water bullet heading straight for the branch he was on. Because of the damage it had already sustained, the pressurized water was able to destroy the branch. Luckily the silver-haired shinobi had already jumped off the branch. While he was in the air his mother appeared in above him. Shinra Tensai, almighty push, she said rocketing the preteen back into the forest floor. Naruto landed in the shrubs, disoriented. He shook his head as he stood up. Oh no she didn't. He mumbled looking at the smirking face of his mother. Okay I got something for that. He said weaving through a series of hand signs. Let's get rid of this forest first. He said charging throughout his entire body. After a large amount of heat could be seen shimmering around the boy. Kaden. A-R-E-K-U-R-U-U Jigoku. Raging inferno. He yelled as a wave of fire erupted all around him, burning the forest to cinders. Thankfully it took Naruto way more than 5 seconds to execute his fiery technique. By that time Kashina used a clone to almighty push the flames, while she herself used the added time to use a couple of shunshins to quickly appear away from the flames. The more techniques he makes the more dangerous they become. She thought with a frown, thinking of all the mysterious techniques he could use against her. Naruto looked around at his work. Wow I'm glad I'm in my mind. 
If I wasn't, this would obviously make a lot of people mad. He said cancelling the flames and taking off on a run. He looked to his right to see a dozen shuriken turning into a hundred, all of which were heading towards him. His eyes radiated chakra as he outstretched his right arm. Shinra Tensai. The technique did its job and pushed the projectiles away and sent some back to their sender. Let's stop with this guerrilla warfare and get to the real fight. Naruto said crossing his arms as his bloodline deactivated. No bloodline, no running, no mercy. He said as his pupils turned to slits to show his extreme focus on his target. No mercy, huh? She said deactivating her own Rinnegan. Interesting, do you really think you can keep up with me without your Rinnegan? Naruto smirked as he uncrossed his arms. I have a feeling you won't be able to answer my questions after this is over. How about you answer them now, before we get started? He asked her. First off, what's the real reason you're in here? Just like your father, I was also able to insert you with chakra. Your father put only enough to stop you from fully releasing the Kyubi while using its chakra. She stopped to see him nodded, already knowing that. Well I put all of my chakra in you. I also put part of my soul inside of you. Part? So you're telling me that you split your soul in two? Naruto questioned with wide eyes. Yes, the other part is inside the Shinigami, along with your father's. I made a deal with the god to allow me to train you. Only when you activated your Rinnegan, she said looking at the artificial sky. And I couldn't have two souls in me, so the Kayubi made the deal more approachable to the god. She nodded looking at him. So when you go, will the Kayubi return? He asked. Absolutely. The soul would return, only to have you gain full control. She said disappearing. Naruto looked around, keeping his guard up. How come I didn't activate this bloodline before I came to this time period? Naruto asked out loud, I don't know, I guess realizing that you didn't have any parents to take care of you, didn't cause you enough emotional pain to have it activated. She said appearing behind him and punching right at his spine. She was ultimately surprised when the body exploded. She was launched backward, her clothes nearly burned off in the blast. When did he make that cage bunch in Bakuha? Shadow clone explosion. She thought a little dizzy from the up close and personal explosion. I'm glad I didn't overload that clone with a massive amount of charka, like I had previously thought of. Otherwise, I wouldn't be enjoying our last fight together. Naruto said smirking as he rose from beneath the earth. Kashina rolled her eyes at her son's nonchalant and cocky attitude. I guess that's only fair. After all I wouldn't want our fight to end too soon. Or else you'll think your mother is weak without her bloodline. She said quickly closing their distance and punching him in the gut. Naruto groaned at the punch and was hit another three times, each in three other spots. Before his mother gave him a final punch to his jaw. Luckily Naruto was able to block the attack and kick his mother in the sternum, making her slide backwards with her feet still planted on the ground. Naruto didn't end there as he appeared in front of her and thrust his palm out. Futon. Gekatai Kyosei. Forced repel. He smirked when the attacks had Kashina flying, literally, across the field. He looked at his hand, the attack he did was an upgraded version of Repusho, Gale Wind Palm, and a more precise version of Shinra Tensai. He used the gravity manipulation he learned to control with a lot of difficulty, while his Rinnegan wasn't activated. It had a lot more power behind the attack, used no hand seals, and was totally unavoidable when used with Taijutsu. He looked in the distance at his mother. She was slowly struggling to get out of a small hill. Kashina groaned as she shook her head of any cobwebs. What the hell was that? I don't remember that jutsu being developed. She thought stumbling to get up. I only have about 20 minutes left in here. Fighting my son is only shortening the time. She realized as she sat up. Doden. Doryuden. Earth dragon projectile. Kashina looked up to see an earthen dragon spitting mud at her. She moved her head to the side to avoid the first one. For the rest of projectiles, she just kept moving her body out of the way. Naruto watched his mom dodged his projectiles and frowned in annoyance. He cancelled the technique and weaved through more hand seals. Sweden. Swiryuden no jutsu. Water dragon projectile technique. Water quickly appeared throughout the air and formed a dragon. Kashina watched the dragon being formed and smirked. You think you can hurt me with water? You're sadly mistaken Sochi. She said going through her own hand seals. Sweden. Hagashi Nami. Fierce wave. She said as the dragon heading towards her went completely around her and went towards Naruto. 
As it was going towards him, it turned into a giant wave. Naruto looked at the wave in surprise. Damn, I kind of walked into this. He said jumping back continuously. As he was jumping he flew through hand seals as quickly as his fingers led him. Futon. Atsugai. He said as the pressurized wind put a hole in the wave. Naruto just jumped through the hole. Now with the wave out of the way he looked around, but couldn't find his mother. It was then he noticed he was in a genjutsu that altered all of his senses. He didn't even feel it when it took hold, but he was in his own mind and didn't have control over it. He quickly broke it to find himself on his back, with his mother over him with a kanai pointed at his neck. You lose Naruto-kun, you're still having problems with genjutsu, fix the problem or you're screwed. She said standing up, Naruto remained on his back. He looked at his mom, you really think I would just let you win? Don't tell me you forgot about my exploding clones. He said causing his mother to widen her eyes. But instead of an explosion of fire, an explosion of smoke was all that clouded her vision, as her body fell about a couple of inches to the floor. After the smoke cleared the redhead looked around to see hundreds of identical copies of her silver-haired son. She silently cursed at the doppelgangers. Be careful mother, I put a couple of exploding clones in this batch. Naruto warned his mother, his voice being projected through all the clones in the field. Kashina began to sweat in slight fear, before she began smirking. I can get rid of these in a couple of minutes. After that I'll only have about 5 minutes left before I vanish. She thought to herself as she fought her last battle with her son. Naruto age 22. Naruto was shaken awake from his dream of the past by his best friend and brother in everything but blood, Hitaki Sakumo. Now being a part of history, Naruto had the chance to meet many legends in the flesh. Sakumo was the best of the best and he was best friends with the man. They first met about a week after his initial removal from Team Saroboy, now Team Hokage. Yes, Hiruzen was now Hokage, thanks to that pre-invasion plan a decade ago. Who would have known that AIM also knew about Tsuna's plan to trek through their territory, and also planned to cut them off. With that a battle between Tsuna's Naidame Case Cage, Toborama Senju, Kona his own Naidame Hokage, and lastly the leader of Omega Cure Hanzo of the Salamander. That mask-wearing bastard surprised both of the major village parties. He and his ambush army attacked fast, while he personally went straight towards Toborama and the Case Cage and begun the battle. You would think, with a common enemy, Toborama and the Case Cage would work together to dispose of the problem. That was not the case, instead Hanzo and the Case Cage realized that with all the water from the rain, Toborama would be far more dangerous. It was a two against one fight, with the Hokage being the one. Fortunately Hiruzen, Homura, Kaharu, and Danzo was there to lessen the assault on their last remaining sensei and their Naidame, respectfully. Hiruzen and Danzo teamed up against the Naidame case cage, while Kaharu and Homura faced off against multiple Jonin and Anbu from both Suna and Aim. The fights were said to be epic in size and time. An hour of straight cage level brawls. Hiruzen and Danzo came out victorious in their fight against the case cage, unfortunately Danzo suffered massive injuries. His right arm and right eye was ultimately damaged. The arm was severed at his shoulder, the eye, the eye was just lucky the forearm took most of the damage. Danzo was lucky that Enma, in his staff form, took off the case cage's head, courtesy of Hiruzen. Do you know how hard a staff has to be and how hard you have to swing said staff, to take someone's head off? Well Hiruzen was glad that he and Enma was the perfect combination for the job. Naruto wasn't told how Toborama fought with Hanzo. All he knew was that the Naidame was killed by poison. Strong poison at that, venom to be precise. Venom found in a venom sack of a black salamander. That's obviously where the man got his name from. With the deaths of their leaders, Suna and Konoha retreated to their respective villages. And Hanzo back to his, to rest his body and allow it to heal. That had been the first and last major loss Konoha had ever been dealt. And with the defeat coming from the hands of Hanzo of Aim, the Land of Rain had become the new battleground for every future battle with Sanagakure, and don't even get me started on Iwagakure. Their actions after the fight, was to try to send countless spies into both countries to see which one was better to invade. They chose Suna and marched through Ishii no Kuni, to get to Kei's no Kuni. Konoha was lucky that Hiruzen was a natural leader. 
He quickly helped his village out of their despair from losing one of the founders of the village, with the first of his legendary speeches. Ever since that battle the training regime of every shinobi in Konoha rose through the roof. And that's where we return to Naruto and his everything but blood brother Sukumo. Naruto wake up, it's time to move out. He said, Sukumo attire wasn't all that special as it was just the standard outfit for any janin. He looked too much like his future son, that Naruto had almost called him Kakashi when they first became janins. Taicho, we sighted Tsunade Senpei and the rest of the squad fighting Hanzo. An Anbu member, clad in a black cloak and a cat mask said at the mouth of the cave the two silver-haired teens were in. Naruto say up against the wall of the cave. What's the status of the entire squad? Never mind, I shouldn't even ask. If what Sarutobi Ni told me is true, then Hanzo is one dangerous bastard. Naruto said as he and Sakumo stood to their feet. Naruto was decked out in a black Anbu style armor. His standard Anbu tattoo graced his left shoulder. Black gloves covered his hands, gray forearms protectors, black pants and gray shin protectors. His boots were also black. He also had a mesh style undershirt and his headband was non-existent. It was prohibited to have your headband while on missions outside of Hai no Kuni, which was all the time. In its place was a mask of a wolf, to show his place as the leader in the pack, so to speak. The mask itself was never worn and always hung from his hip. Alright lead the way. Naruto commanded as he and Sakumo sped out of the cave with the other three Anbu members following. In minutes Naruto and Sakumo dropped to the ground, right behind their comrades. Suhaim. Naruto said causing the woman to turn around. Naruto-kun, she nearly screamed. She turned back towards Hanzo, who stood on top of his massive salamander. I told you he'll be here. Prepare to have your ass handed to you. Hanzo looked down at the newcomers. Well if it isn't the Futago no Jin Okami. Twin silver wolves. This day just got more interesting. I just named these three Konoha's Densetsu no Sanin and now I get to fight you too. Let's get started shall we? He said vanishing from atop his salamander. Sakumo also vanished. Soon the sounds of fighting filled the air. Meanwhile Naruto checked the remaining three members of the infiltrating squad. They each were wearing Anbu style armor, but none were actually in the core. Thank Kami, you're still breathing. He told all three. Orochimaru scoffed, of course we're still breathing. We're the legendary Sanin, he said smiling. Naruto looked at his friend with a straight face. We just became the damn Sanin. Jiraiya said from around Orochimaru's arm. Don't you think you should help Sakumo-kun? I mean Hanzo is pretty strong. Tsunade said. Naruto shook his head. Sakumo can handle himself. How the hell you get detected during your mission? Naruto said looking at his squad and seeing them decimating some chunins. They have a pretty impressive security system. You see this rain? Jiraiya asked pointing up with a finger. I haven't fully figured it out yet, but I know that 20 minutes after entering, we were surrounded. Jiraiya explained. Naruto nodded looking at the raindrops that were hitting them. Impressive indeed. He stated looking towards Sakumo and Hanzo's fight. The silver-haired teen had just cut into the older man's chest with his white chakra Tonto. With that Tonto, Sakumo gained his own personal name. Konoha's Shiro Kiba, White Fang, is what he's called when he and Naruto aren't together. Naruto continued to watch his brother fight the man that killed his Nidame. He narrowed his eyes in frustration and vanished. Hanzo held his chest in slight pain. The cut wasn't deep, but there was white chakra leaking from it. What the hell did you do to me? He asked. Sakumo smirked. Wouldn't you like to know? He said as more chakra covered his tanto. Let me show you what I did. He said swinging the tanto towards the wounded man. Ninpo. Chakura no Yajurushi. Arrows of chakra. Three arrows launched at Hanzo with incredible speed. Hanzo couldn't dodge the speeding arrows. And because of that he was hit exactly on his wound. He yelled in pain as crouched on a single knee. This is like a homing beacon. He realized indicating the white chakra on his wound. Sakumo would have answered back, but was stopped as he witnessed Naruto kicking the man in the side of the head. I was wondering when you were going to join the fight. No lie, that man is crazy strong. He said looking towards the downed man. I know what you mean. He must have had his full attention on you. Because on the way I was expecting him to grab me out of the air. Naruto said scratching his head. Maybe your arrows did more damage than you thought. Sakumo shook his head. No, 
You know the arrow's damage is only based on the amount of chakra I have on the target. He explained looking at Hanzo. The leader of AIM rose to his feet and felt his mask. Part of it was cracked and he ripped it off in anger. Those bastards. I will kill them. He thought in anger. Naruto watched Hanzo closely. He could see a weird light green mist escaping from the man's mouth, before it was overcome by the rain. That must be what killed Toborama-sama. We have to be careful now and keep our distance. Naruto said quickly glancing at Sakumo who nodded. Hanzo was soon found gone from his spot. Where the hell did he go? Sakumo asked as he was watching him the entire time. Naruto looked back to really find the man gone. He heard a gurgling sound and looked to see Hanzo choking Sakumo. The man inhaled and everything started moving in slow motion for Naruto. He dashed forward and right when the man was about to exhale venom right in Sakumo's face, he thrust both of his hands. Futon. Gekatai Suru Suyoi. Intense repel. Just like its single palmed counterpart, Hanzo was launched across the field, but not without one of the attacks hitting the man's elbow, shattering the bone and ripping through the flesh. Sakumo dropped to the floor, coughing. He reached up and ripped the dismembered arm from around his neck. He looked up at Naruto to thank him when he noticed the look in his eye. It was his Rinnegan and he had only used it when he was at his angriest. Stay out for the rest of the fight, Nisan. I'll handle the rest. Sakumo could do nothing but nodded slowly. Naruto looked back at Tsunade. I'm going to avenge your granduncle, my love. He said just loud enough to be heard by everyone. He turned back and started walking towards Hanzo's location. His walk turned into a jog and his jog, into a sprint. That sprint turned into him vanishing. Tsunade looked back at the location, where Naruto was last seen. Previously, every time she would see him with the Rinnegan it would bring chills up and down her spine. But the sight of it now made her feel relaxed and protected. Don't hold back anything, she thought the obvious. Orochimaru glared at the distance, where he and everyone else, could feel Naruto's chakra running wildly. With Hanzo's dropping lower and lower. Trees were being uprooted and flames were spreading, seemingly ignoring the fire. He was angry that he didn't have a bloodline like Naruto's. It's always him. Why is he so special? Why is it that I can never match his power? He thought as he turned his attention to Sakumo. And even this one. He even surpasses our power. I can tell he wasn't fighting at his full strength. His special Tanto and Naruto's Rinnegan are the most desired things I want and I will have them. I just have to wait. Orochimaru schemed. Sweet Kami, I'm glad he's on our side. Jiraiya said when he seen a massive Shinra Tensai. It was focused downward and made a, just as massive, visible crater in the ground. Everybody nodded their heads, now knowing that with the last attack Hanzo was no more. The entire area was dead silent. The Anbu had quickly disposed of the Chunins and Janins that were with Hanzo, causing any leftovers to flee back to the village. In the distance Naruto could be seen walking back. A few cuts along his armor, but nothing that couldn't be quickly repaired. The Rinnegan was no longer active and he walked with an air of accomplishment. He had just defeated Hanzo the Salamander. Just like what he suspected, Hanzo couldn't compete with the Rinnegan. That was why Nagato, Pain was able to defeat him so easily. It was obvious that a Rinnegan used in anger brings victory to the bearer. Naruto approached the group. Even with the failure of your mission, I guess we can count the death of their leader a success. He said smiling brightly. With aim finally dealt with, the second ninja war is officially over. He said crossing his arms. Sakumo and the others shook their head at Naruto's declaration. Taicho. Even though the war's over, we can still continue their mission. All we have to do is retrieve information about their defense system, just in case we need to use it against them in the future. One of Naruto's female subordinates said appearing behind Naruto, crouched in a bow. The captain nodded, yes Usagi, rabbit. Sakumo could you lead the mission, you're just as good a leader as I am. He said walking to and taking Tsunade's hand. Sakumo sighed at the offer. I would like to return to Kai Chan back at home. She and I have not spent all that time together and I would like to rectify that. He argued. The Anbu captain nodded his head. Yeah, I understand that. But I haven't spent any time with Suheim. Even with the end of the war, I wouldn't be able to have this chance for a long time. I'm still an Anbu captain remember. Then how about stop being a damn Anbu captain? You knew how the hours were going to be when you joined that damn corps five years ago. 
That's your own fault. Sakumo responded crossing his arms. Naruto looked at Tsunade for help. Oh brother. She thought rolling her eyes. Don't look at me like that. I'm not fighting your battles. She said putting her hands on her hips. Come on Sakumo. You're going to go anyway. Just go without me. You can boss around my squad as much as you want. The younger silver-haired Anbu captain offered. What? Usagi couldn't help but yell. Two more Anbu members dropped next to her. A cane, turtle, masked male and a nako, cat, masked female. Tempting. Sakumo mumbled rubbing his chin, feeling some hairs. Taicho, you can't be serious. Kame said. Yeah I'm not serious. You can't command my squad. Nako lead the mission. It's your duty as lieutenant anyway. Naruto caved in. Yata. She cheered showing why Naruto didn't want her to lead. She was like a little kid stuck in a grown woman's body. Don't worry Taicho. I'll lead this mission flawlessly. She said disappearing with a shunshin. The other two members sighed dreadfully and vanished with their lieutenant. I hate you, so much. Naruto said looking at Sakumo. Sakumo smiled. Oh stop exaggerating. He said chuckling loudly. Have fun on your date. He said laughing again as he used a shunshin to begin his journey home. What kind of date is this? Naruto nearly yelled as he glanced at all the dead bodies. A bad one. Jiraiya said, making Tsunade and Naruto glare at him. He nervously chuckled as he quickly removed himself from Orochimaru's help and started walking away. The previous blonde noticed how slow Jiraiya was moving inside, you three should take it easy for a while. We need to find a place to allow you to rest, he said as he left a clone to properly bury the lost leaf ninja and burn the others. Hanzo already being sealed and ready for transport to the village. Hopefully the medics there could work with what's left. I agree. The sooner we rest up, the sooner I can return home. Tsunade said before looking over at Naruto. You did get Hanzo's body right. I'm thinking if I can find out what made him so poisonous I can not only devise an antidote but we can put it in our own arsenal. What do you take me for, an inattentive genin? I got the bastard right here. He said patting his pouch that contained the scroll that contained Hanzo. You keep talking to me like that and you'll wish you were an inattentive genin. Tsunade said scowling at Naruto. Hey look it stopped raining. Naruto said trying to distract her only to find that it indeed had stopped raining. It'll be back tomorrow. Orochimaru said truthfully. Not that I'm trying to interrupt any of you, but we're being followed. Naruto stopped moving, with a thoughtful look on his face as he began thinking. Wait, doesn't Jiraiya and them meet the AIM orphans around this time? He thought turning around. You can come out now, Naruto said. A head peeked out from behind a fallen tree. A weird helmet was left down behind the little boy's neck. Orange hair and bright blue eyes. He jogged toward them and held out his hand. Give me your food. Naruto knowing this was Yahiko, dug into his pouch, not at all surprised about the forceful tone. He took out a scroll that contained food. What about your friends? I have enough for all three of you. He smiled looking in the distance to see the other two, Conan and Nagato. They each had to be around 7 or 8 years old. They were also wearing identical helmet thingies. Jiraiya walked beside Naruto to get a better look at the three children. These children have been following us since the battlefield. He said crouching down and giving the orange haired child another piece of bread. Why aren't you at home? A battlefield isn't a place for children. They don't have a home to go to Jiraiya. They're orphans Baka. Tsunade said slapping Jiraiya in the back of the head. We should just put them out of their misery and kill them. That way they wouldn't have to suffer. At that point the three children stopped eating and started panicking. Why do you have to be so cold hearted, Teme? We're not going to kill anybody. Naruto said resisting the urge to launch a fireball at the snake user. So what are your names? Naruto asked looking at the three children already knowing the answer. I'm Yahiko. The orange haired boy said. That's Conan, he said pointing at the blue haired little girl. And this one is Nagato. What's the matter with them, they can't talk. Jiraiya said, what the hell's wrong with you? They're obviously shy because we're from Konoha. Shinobi from our village probably. Naruto trailed off as he began to think. He looked at Nagato. Nagato, from my time, told me that he activated his Rinnegan before he met the Sanin. So he must have it on now, since he couldn't seem to deactivate it. Naruto thought gesturing for Nagato to come to him with his finger. Nagato, come here, there's something oddly familiar about you. He said playing it off perfectly. 
What's wrong Naruto? What could be familiar about someone you only just met? Tsunade said from behind Naruto, as Orochimaru just sighed and watched. Before Nagato could decline and speak his mind, Yahiko yelled. Train us to become strong like you. I've heard enough. Orochimaru said pushing off the tree he was leaning against. I have to go return to my remaining student and tell him the news about the war being over. He said walking away. Tell Nawaki-kun I said hi. She said before turning to Naruto and smiling brightly at how he saved Nawaki a few weeks ago. But that's another story, let's just say, their love has grown stronger. If you train us, I'll give you this. Conan said from the side as she took out a origami rose head. She offered it to Tsunade who smiled at the little girl and took the flower. Sorry, sweetie, but I can't train you. I have to return to the village. She said apologetically. I'll train you kids. Jiraiya said shocking Tsunade, I have a book to write. This break will be the perfect for me to finish just that. Jiraiya said smiling as he rubbed Yahiko's head. Who knows, I might even find my child of prophecy. He said smiling brightly. Naruto looked at Jiraiya, the child of prophecy? Oh yeah that's me, he thought smiling. He turned back to Nagato. Show me your eyes, he said almost in a commanding voice. Everyone stared at Naruto surprised. They had seen him commanding squads of Anbu, Janin, Chunin, and even them, but orphan children. Naruto, what's wrong with you? Jiraiya asked before Tsunade could. The Uzumaki ignored him and continued to stare into the child, aware of all of the children's fear. Finally Nagato complied and moved the hair away from his eyes. The Rinnegan was revealed to everyone. The others gasped at seeing the Rinnegan in another person. Naruto lowed his head his own bangs overshadowing his eyes. He took a deep breath and rose his head. Hi cousin, he said his own Rinnegan activated. Nagato's face was pure shock, as he looked into the older Uzumaki's eyes. It took him about a minute for his brain to reboot and comprehend what he was just called. Cousin? The young Rinnegan user asked. The silvery-haired captain smiled, the previous tension gone like the wind. It made the kids feel at ease, but still cautious around the captain. Yeah, we're cousins. He then began to think, the longer he stared into his cousin's eyes. You must be holding on to the pain of losing your parents, since your Rinnegan is constantly active. He mused softly. Nagato was once again shocked that this man knew so much about him. First he knew about the death of his parents, and that traumatic event bringing forth the Rinnegan in the first place, and the second being that it's been active since then. How do you know about that? He asked nearly fearing the answer because I know everything. Naruto chuckled making his eyes flash brightly before they deactivated. Go on, try letting go of your pain and calm your agitated chakra. Naruto instructed watching the young Uzumaki struggle. It's okay, you'll get it eventually. He said before looking at Jiraiya. Change of plans pervert. For the last time, I'm not a pervert. Naruto stopped Jiraiya with a dismissive wave of his hand. Yeah yeah yeah, super pervert. Change of plans, I'm going to train the kids. I figured that with that book you want to be writing that training kids would only shorten your free time. Plus you could train yourself. Hanzo was too easy and you should not have had any trouble with him. What? The Gama Senen yelled, more miffed about the jab to his skills rather than losing three children to train. Not all of us are the god of Shinobi, you not so righteously took from Sensei. Well I didn't want to always be called a fucking god of war. It makes me sound like a warhawk. Naruto said standing up to look at Jiraiya agitated. Who cares about that? That name was awesome. Tsunade stood at the side watching as her two friends argued about the name her boyfriend is feared by. She felt a tug on her pants leg and looked down to see Conan still there. Are they always like this? Tsunade nodded, every time we meet up for a mission. She said shaking her head at the adults still acting like children. But she smiled thinking about children, mostly her little brother. She looked at Naruto lovingly, they had been dating for the past decade and now that the war is over they can finally get married. Naruto told her that he'll propose after the war ends. She wanted to get married nearly a year ago, after he saved Nawaki with his Rinnegan powers. She remembered that day when Orochimaru brought her the Shodai's necklace that she had gave to Nawaki, the previous day. Flashback. Ten months ago. Tsunade was running through the halls of Konoha's hospital. She had just gotten news that her brother had returned from his first mission in critical condition. She didn't understand how he could get into such a state after just leaving for the mission the previous day. 
It baffled her, but remembering that it was her brother in that state she sped up. She reached her brother's door to see Orochimaru in front of it with his head down. What happened Orochi-kun? What happened to the rest of your team? She asked remembering about not hearing anything about the rest of the team. The snake user lowered his head into pair, if only I was stronger. I could have saved them all. I could have saved Nawaki, your brother, I wasn't fast enough. I wasn't strong enough. Hearing her proud, and slightly arrogant, teammate talk like that got her blood boiling in anger. She grabbed him by his collar and slammed him against the wall. Don't talk like that. Get your fucking head together. She snarled resisting the urge to slap him. She let him drop to the floor and watched him dig into his sleeve, wincing in the process. I recovered this from the body. He said holding the Shodai's necklace, now partially covered in dry blood. The blonde used all of her willpower not to flat out fall to her knees and cry. She did reach down and take the pendant from Orochimaru's hand and let a few tears fall from her face. She hugged the necklace against her chest and steeled her nerves and walked into the room. Doctors inside were scrambling around, doing everything they can to save Nawaki. She soon joined the process and increased the chances of survival for her little brother. It was all for naught though as Nawaki's life force continued to drop to dangerous levels. Tears were flowing freely from Tsunade's eyes now, as she continued to try and fail to successfully stabilize her brother. Don't go Nawakun, please don't leave me here, she continued to say through the process. At the rate Nawaki's heart rate and organ usage was dropping, he would be dead within the hour. Just as it seemed that nothing could work to save Nawaki, the tired doctors heard yelling. Which room is he in? They were confused as to whose voice that was, but Tsunade watched with tears in her eyes as Naruto stumbled into the room. An hour ago, when Naruto heard about Tsunade's brother from one of his subordinates he smacked himself in the forehead and sped towards the village. Currently he was deep within Earth Country, doing a reconnaissance mission and an assassination mission of a traitorous diplomat. Luckily or not so luckily for him, Nawaki had been injured hours ago. So if he hurried as quick as he could, he would be able to make it in time. Fuck, he cursed to himself as he left his hyper-lieutenant in charge of the mission. How could I forget about the most important thing in this time? I need to hurry, he said landing on a branch and closing his eyes, remaining perfectly still. He felt the power of nature filling his being, he opened his eyes, showing his horizontal pupils and orange irises. The orange pigment around his eyes also showing. He went a step further and took another deep breath. The horizontal pupil began to stretch vertically, making a plus sign. He smirked when he felt more power envelop his being, just because he didn't have the Kyubi's soul and conscious didn't mean that he couldn't use the full power of the Kyubi. The Nine Tails mode shroud, if it could even be called that anymore, surrounded him and further boosted his power. And with a power boost, usually meant a speed boost. And with that he blasted, both figuratively and literally, off the branch, making a trench along the ground behind him and destroying a couple of trees. He flew through the air going faster than anybody could dream of. His mastery of the wind element allowed him to actually fly through the sky, far better than the middle-aged Tsuchikage. Speaking of the Tsuchikage, I have a feeling I'm going to have to fight him in the future. Naruto said remembering what happened a few years ago, when the cage of Iwagakure single-handedly defeated a platoon of Jonin and Chunin. With only a couple of jutsus, dust style if in, intentional, survivor said, Naruto shook his head and lowered himself to the ground, feeling his power boosts going away. They could only hold for five minutes, together like they were. He kept his sage mode active and only released his hold on his chakra shroud. He didn't know why he kept calling it the Kyubis when it was his and all his. He safely landed on a branch and cursed about not actually learning how to do the Hiroshin. And speaking of, he was going to start as soon as he got home. The scroll was somewhere in his library. He cursed again when he noticed that he was only just passing the border to the country. Damn I knew I was deep but not that deep. He muttered as he doubled his speed. Now, Naruto stumbled into the hospital room to see Tsunade by her brother's bedside crying and staring at him in sadness. His everything hurt and his chakra was going crazy, as if it was filled with adrenaline. Thank Kami he had so much or he would be in the hospital bed. His hair wasn't its usual straight and shiny look, but it was out of place and filled with sweat. He looked at Nawaki and his Rinnegan immediately flared to life. I can heal him, 
I just need all the machines unhooked. Tsunade immediately stood up, not in joy, but in anger. Unplug him. That'll only kill him faster. She yelled getting into his face. Naruto looked into his girlfriend's eyes, that were filled with so much sadness and anger. Suheim trust me. Naruto pleaded softly caressing her cheek. Tsunade looked into her lover's eyes and seeing his determination. You can heal him? She asked softly. Yes I can heal him, he said taking the other cheek in his other hand. And bringing her face closer to his and giving her a loving kiss. I just need to take him outside, he said after ending the kiss. Do trust me? He whispered to her, kissing her another time. She nodded kissing him again, tears still flowing down her face, knowing that as soon as the machines were gone, her brother would officially die. She buried her face in her lover's chest, do what he says and unhook my brother. She said her voice muffled by Naruto's vest. Are you sure, Tsunade-sama? One of the medic nins said, to which she only nodded in Naruto's chest, feeling Naruto continuously stroke her hair. Bring him to the roof of the hospital when you're done. Naruto said as he led Tsunade out the room, knowing she didn't want to see her brother die in front of her eyes. The couple met up with Orochimaru, who had remained where he was in sadness, but with a glimmer of hope from hearing what Naruto said. Maybe, just maybe, Naruto-kun can heal Nawaki-kun. With those special eyes of his, he can easily accomplish that. He thought noticing the Rinnegan in the silvery-haired captain his wolf mask hanging from his belt, as clear as day. Naruto continued to escort Tsunade to the roof, now holding her in the bridal position. I don't think you would want to see your brother's death, but you'll rather see his rebirth. Naruto said kissing the top of her hair. She muttered something, that Naruto understood to be a, thank you. He walked, noticing that Orochimaru was behind them, knowing that he would be able to apologize to Nawaki pretty soon. The roof was just the right size for what the Anbu captain had in mind. He turned to see the doctors carrying Nawaki's body on the floor, carefully of course. Naruto set Tsunade down and walked towards the body. He could tell that he was nearly dead, and only a couple of seconds away from passing on. He took that time to stand straight and concentrate on one of the most taxing techniques the Rinnegan had to offer. He had seen Nagato do it before, on a much wider scale. So doing it for a single person shouldn't really be that hard. He calmed his chakra and took multiple deep breaths. He formed the ram seal and summoned the king of hell, ghetto, purple flames around its enlarged head, and its mouth wide open. A kanji for, king, on its forehead. Naruto was concentrating so hard on his chakra that it was actually visible to the prospectors, as it was being infused into the king of hell. As more chakra was being fed to the king, its mouth started glowing a light green. Ghetto. Rinne Tensai no Jutsu. Outer Path. Samsara of Heavenly Life Technique. Naruto said forming a snake seal. The light, chakra shot from the mouth and entered Nawaki's body, causing it to twitch from the power behind the shot. When Nawaki started to slowly open his eyes, he was immediately hugged by Tsunade. Tsunade Nichan, you saved me. He said slowly and softly, because his organs were just beginning to get back into use again. All Tsunade could do was sob into her brother's little chest. The other doctors were surprised by that not only was Naruto able to bring Nawaki back to life but he suffered no repercussions. At that Naruto started wobbling and crashed onto the roof floor. Tsunade heard Orochimaru yell Naruto's name and looked up to see Naruto on the floor. Naruto-kun, she said running to him. She put his head into her lap. Are you okay Koibito? She said concerned dripping from her voice. Naruto slowly opened his eyes. I'm fine. I just, nay, li let me just close my eyes. He said feeling unnaturally weak at the moment. She kissed his forehead, knowing he just need to rest from his chakra exhaustion. She was surprised that he could even get chakra exhaustion, with all the chakra he had. Whatever he used must have been used nearly all of it. She reached for her grandfather's necklace and put it around Naruto's head, feeling that he should have it more. I love you so much Naruto-kun. She said softly as she kissed his cheek once more. Flashback end. Tsunade chuckled remembering the sad day. Naruto was put into a week-long coma and spent that time with Nawaki, who was fully recovering from any of his remaining wounds. Just end it Jiraiya and go write your damn book. Naruto said pointing to his right. Jiraiya huffed and crossed his arms, fine, I'll leave. Just know that you haven't seen the last of me. He said turning and walking away. 
Take as much time as you want pervert. Naruto said, as Jiraiya disappeared. He turned his attention back to Nagato and Yahiko that was still in front of him. I'm going to get you three so strong, you'll be able to defeat that pervert one on one, easily. He said showing a big grin. What about you? Conan said, before Tsunade could cover her mouth. Naruto scoffed, are you kidding, nobody can beat me. He said showing an even wider grin. He heard Tsunade clear her throat and chuckled, what? Never mind, she said grabbing Conan's hand and walking away. Naruto looked at her retreating figure and looked down at the two young boys. Beware of the opposite sex, was all he said before he chased after her. Yahiko and Nagato stayed there for a couple more seconds. What do you think he meant by that? Nagato said. Yahiko shrugged his shoulder and they ran to catch up with the others. Seven hours later, Naruto and the group walked pasted another tree and the three kids were getting tired, again. Naruto sensei, can we take a break? Conan asked from beside him. Again? We just took a break an hour ago. He complained. Just because they took a break, doesn't mean that they fully rested. They barely rested at all. Not all of us can have your never-ending stamina. Tsunade said with her hands on her hips. But I thought you loved my unlimited stamina? He said with a subtle smirk. Tsunade blushed and she was thankful that the three kids were still kids, and didn't catch what Naruto was implying. She willed the blush away and steeled her glare at him. Do I have to knock some sense into you? She said. Naruto pouted and crossed his arms, fine. He said as three puffs of smoke appeared out of nowhere. A seal-less shadow clone was one of his earlier masterpieces. The three clones picked the children up and started walking ahead. Before Naruto could go join the group, Tsunade grabbed his hand. There's no telling when we can have some alone time, now that you have a team to take care of. Let's make this a quickie. She said deeply kissing him. Lemon start. Naruto wrapped his arms around Tsunade's waist and tightly grabbed her ass. She moaned into his mouth as he kneaded her ass flesh. Tsunade was idle with her own hands as they journeyed from Naruto's vest-covered chest to the bottom of said vest. She lifted and took the heavily padded clothing off over his head. The kiss only ended momentarily, and resumed as soon as Naruto was shirtless. Naruto's right hand journeyed up to the blonde's hair, and undid the two ponytails, letting her hair fall sensuously down her back. Naruto ended the kiss, making Tsunade groan in disappointment. But she knew what he wanted, and lifted her arms, so that her own vest could come off. The blouse was next and Naruto sucked on her nipple through her bra, making her moan and squeeze his head against her bosom. Yes, she moaned in pleasure as the front of the bra was cut by a blade of wind. Naruto then went to work on her mammary directly, circling his tongue around her areola and completely ignoring her nipple. She groaned in annoyance and feeling him ignoring her nipple, and smirked, two can play that game. She thought as she reached down and unbuckled his pants. She loosened the garment and stuck her hand inside, grasping at his appendage, softly and slowly stroking. Naruto grinned against her bountiful breast and lightly bit her nipple, causing her to loudly and quite cutely mew in pleasure and tightly grab his penis, squeezing it. He groaned in mild pain, remembering about her super strength. Note to self. Don't do that again. He thought bringing up his other hand and showing attention to her other tit kneading and rolling the nipple between his thumb and index finger. She moaned and jerked his cock faster. Her other hand grabbed his hair and squeezed him against her chest harder, feeling her orgasm approaching. Yes, yes, right there, I'm nearly there. Ah uh ah, -uh. she moaned loudly feeling her panties being sprayed with her juices. Naruto held Tsunade up by her breast, knowing her orgasm had to be pretty powerful, thanks to their break from the last time they had. He backed her up some, causing her to wrap her legs around his waist. Her back soon met the rough exterior of a maple tree. She groaned and felt her pants being pulled down. Oh, you're gonna eat that pussy huh? She said panting eyely. Yeah I'm gonna eat this pussy. I'm gonna eat this wet pussy. He said seeing wetness all over her lower lips, still dripping into her panties. Naruto looked up into his lover's hazel eyes before he slowly licked the juice from her thighs and around her lips. Tsunade loved it when he did this, while looking at her. It just made it all the more wonderful when he reached the center. Him hurry up, you bastard. She said showing some impatience. Naruto slowly licked her outer lips. Flattening his tongue before moving all the way to the very top of her pussy. Sucking on the clit. Causing Tsunade to pant faster and moan. 
telling him to lick faster and harder. Naruto grinned and lifted her legs and rested them on his shoulders. Before he could go back to slowly licking, Tsunade used her legs to pull him into her pussy. She moaned as his long and wet tongue invaded her extensively wet pussy. Naruto grinned again and quickly got to work on finding all of Tsunade's sweet spots. She came in seconds, leaving his face covered in her juices. Tsunade continued to moan, finding that Naruto wasn't letting her come down from her high and continued to lick her puffing lips. Ah Naruto, I'm going to come again. She screamed again as her third orgasm approached before her second could leave. Naruto stopped this time, slowly licking her gushing pussy. He unwrapped her loosened legs from around his head and stood to her feet to kiss her. She moaned tasting her own juices and licked around his mouth, her saliva now covering his face. She continued to lick down his chest, finding her juices ran down to his pants. Hmm, my turn, she said slowly pulling his pants down and seeing his 8-inch cock. It was free, throbbing along with Naruto's heartbeat and completely hers. Hmm, did you miss me? She asked lightly kissing the head and licking at the slit. Naruto looked down as she continued to place feathery light kisses around his cock, her right hand slowly pumping him, while her left caressed his balls. He sure did miss you and your wonderful mouth, Su Chan. Naruto said smiling as his left hand rubbed the top of her head. Tsunade wrapped her lips around the cock head and sucked hard. Yes, I know you did. And I missed you, she said licking up and down the shaft, coating it in her saliva. I know two others that missed you too, penis coon. She said using her left hand to lift her generously large e-cup tits. Naruto grinned knowing and loving what was to come. She lifted her body and his dick easily slid between her tits. She left arm keeping it inside, the head peeking out of her cleavage. Naruto reached down and caressed her tits as she wrapped her other arm around her breast. Go on and fuck my tits Naruto-kun. She said looking up at Naruto and fluttering her eyelashes at him. You don't have to tell me twice. He said as he begun pumping his length up into her chest. By this time his cock was harder than it could possibly get, his cock head purple with the amount of blood circulating down there. Tsunade felt the head of his cock hit her chin and his balls hitting the bottom of her breast, repeatedly. She lowered her head and let the cock enter her mouth, sucking on the head while it was in her mouth. Naruto moaned feeling his balls tightening and unloosening, just waiting to unload all over her face. Just the thought of her face covered in his cum was making him pump fast. You going to cum yet? Go ahead and cover my pretty face. Naruto's blonde lover said causing him to grunt and moan as his cock hosed her down. Multiple ropes of thick, white cum plastered Tsunade's face and pulled into her large cleavage. Ah that's what I love. She said sucking on his cock, coaxing out another spurt of cum. Naruto stumbled back from the dizzying orgasm. It felt that awesome. He leaned against a tree and opened his eyes to see Tsunade cleaning her chest with her tongue, eating his cum from all over her breast. They locked eyes and his erection came back full force. I don't think this is going to be a quickie. He said after she finished cleaning her breast spotless, also using her fingers to get the sticky strands from her face. When he grabbed her cheeks, her face was cum free and Naruto wasted no time in kissing her deeply. Tsunade wrapped her arms around his head and latched her legs around his waist for the second time, his penis meeting her pussy, but not entering. I want you inside, now. She said her voice dripping with lust. Naruto grabbed onto her fat ass roughly, spreading her ass cheeks and slapping them together. All you had to do was ask. He said bringing his penis back before putting the head at her entrance. He went back to holding her hips. Beg for it. He simply said. Tsunade smirked. You want me to beg for it? She said moving her head forward and kissing him. Yes beg for it my love. Naruto said moving his lips to her neck, biting and nipping softly on her skin. Alright I'll beg for it. She said trying to make him thrust in her, but his firm grip on her hips prevented him from doing so. Come on, get in there. I want this dick. She said continuing to try to get the dick in her. Beg better than that. Naruto said huskily into her ear, that made Tsunade have a mini orgasm. Come on Naru-kun, put that dick in my wet pussy. It needs to be filled with your big cock. She said pouting and giving him the puppy dog eyes. Naruto held out for as long as he could, not noticing that his grip was weakening and her attempts were getting stronger. His penis sliding in, only an inch at a time, teasing Tsunade. 
Come on put your cock in my puss why 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 why. She yelled when Naruto met her attempt and thrust fully inside of her. The two moaned at feeling tightness and being filled, respectively. The silvery haired captain kissed his lover as he pumped up. Tsunade moaned into his mouth as he mercilessly pounded at her needy pussy. They remained standing until Tsunade had an orgasm and Naruto dropped to his knees laid her on the ground and resumed his pounding, keeping her coming. It was all fine and dandy, but even he couldn't resist the tightness any longer. I'm gonna come, are you ready? Naruto asked as his thrusts got shorter, but faster. Tsunade barely comprehended what he said. Don't come inside of me, unless you're ready for what comes out. She said between moans, oh I'm ready for what comes out. Remember, no more war. He said quickening his thrusts. Tsunade moaned, is this your idea of a proposal? She asked feeling her energy leaving her body as she clenched her eyes shut and tightened around him. Naruto groaned and grunted as he had his second orgasm of their consummation. He released rope after rope of cum into his lover. Naruto laid on her body, making sure to keep his weight from crushing her. He felt her hard nipples against his chest, as her breathing was relaxed, telling him that she passed out in pleasure. He smiled down at her, noticing his hair was touching her face. He chuckled and brushed his hair back and kissed her nose, definitely. He said answering her question, smiling as he did so. Lemon and 30 minutes after cleaning. Naruto, with Tsunade in his arms entered the hotel. Two of his previous clones dispelled and told him what he needed to know. He walked up the stairs and knocked on the door, and watched his clone open it and dispel. The three AIM orphans were already tucked in, they already had their baths, and Tsunade was also napping in his arms, her clothes dirty and her hair a complete mess. I guess we can stay here for a day or two to fully recharge. Naruto commented to himself as he walked into the bathroom to draw him and Tsunade a bath. Luckily, like any ninja, they had a change of clothing sealed into a scroll. And fortunately said seals weren't lost in their activity. And good thing they were on the soft grassy plains, fire country had, whilst not softer than grass country's grass, but it was shorter than said country's grass. Naruto then began to think about his life, he had a better, if not war-filled, childhood and he had the true love of his life. A true brother, in both Hiruzen and Sukumo. Great friends in Jiraiya and Orochimaru, though he has his moments where Naruto just wants to slap him upside his head. But there's good in him, he was just not overlosing two-thirds of his genin team. Even better the best ramen stand in history, literally, was up and running. And he couldn't wait to get him a bowl. He was drooling just thinking about the first bite into those delicious noodles. Tucci and his wife Ayane were the best ramen chefs in history. Ayane was like a complete replica to her future daughter, maybe it was because they were the same age. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and relaxed in the tub along with Tsunade, who was now awoke and was now just enjoying Naruto washing her body. She leaned her head back and kissed him lovingly. I do, she said agreeing to his proposal from before. Naruto smiled and they had a true quickie before getting out of the tub and entering the bed, totally forgetting they had children in the hotel and wetting the bed with their wet bodies. Next day, Naruto awoke to Tsunade's smiling, sleeping face. He kissed her cheek and lifted his head to see the three AIM orphans looking at him with blushing faces. Ah, Naruto unmanly shrieked as he dove back into Tsunade's cleavage causing her to moan, and ask him if he wanted to go again, in a sleepy voice. Naruto blushed, knowing that made the three children blush even more. I think that's what they meant by stamina yesterday. Naruto heard Yahiko whisper to one of the others. This made Tsunade wake up fully, when she heard the voices. She turned her head to see the three smiling children. Can you give us some privacy? She said blushing as the three children quickly ran to the other room. She watched them close the door and turned her head to look at Naruto, who was still concealing his face in her chest. How come you didn't tell me they were right there? She scolded. Naruto looked up at her, through his bangs, so I guess this is a no, for another round? He asked sheepishly as he began to lick the top of her breast. That's exactly what it means. She said kind of loudly, before she grabbed his face and kissed him on his lips. Just not now, she said whispering when she broke the kiss off. Naruto smiled and looked at the door to the room, to see it cracked, and six eyes looking inside. His eyes flashed light gray for a second, before he stretched his arm, Bansho Tenen. All creation attraction, 
The door immediately closed, causing the three children to shriek in surprise. Tsunade watched Naruto smirk triumphantly and lightly slapped in him on his chest. That wasn't necessary. She chided as she got up from the bed and looked around for her clothes, well the scroll that contained a new pair. Naruto watched her walk around, the sheet not doing a good job in hiding her plump behind. I love you Suhaim. Naruto said sighing loudly. She smiled at him and picked up her scroll and moved to the bathroom to get dressed. Naruto smiled at the closed door, before he spotted his vest and used Bansho tendon to pull it to him. I'm not abusing this technique at all. He told himself with a smile as he turned the vest inside out. A seal was visible that held his clothes scroll and a couple of extra supplies. A transporter for his mask being one of them. The transporter was a blank mask itself and could only be used once, which was a good thing, because he left his mask in the forest somewhere. Which was stupid of him, of course. He placed the mask on his face and channeled chakra into it and his mask's design shimmered onto the blank porcelain. Mask Location the mask was currently in the hand of a traveling merchant who had moved off of the main road, cause he had to take a leak. This mask is going to sell for a fortune. He said knowing it was a genuine Konoha Anbu mask. He was very surprised to see the image shimmering out of view, leaving the mask completely white. Hey, what the hell? He said before he got even more surprised when the mask broke into a dozen pieces and each individual piece caught fire. Ah, he said dropping the fragments he held in his hand. He shed tears at seeing his chance at getting some serious cash going up in flames. He wiped his tears and shrugged, easy come, easy go. He said walking back to his things. Back with Naruto. Naruto took his mask off and proceeded to dress. Now donning a simple, crimson red shirt, the Shodai's necklace nicely contrasting with his shirt. He wore black pants that had his ankles taped off. He placed his vest over the shirt and hung his mask on his hip along with a ninja pouch. He left his hands gloveless and began putting on his shoes. By this time the three children came out of the room and looked around. Where's Tsunade-san? Conan said to which Naruto pointed to the bathroom door. Naruto finished and stood up, as soon as she's finished it'll be time for breakfast. He said as he summoned a clone that began cooking breakfast. He pointed to the three children and motioned for them to sit on the floor as he went through his supplies, looking for something. They did as instructed and Yahiko spoke up. What you looking for sensei? Naruto grunted in response and continued. A second minute later he found success and held up paper. Paper? If you wanted paper, I could have given you some. Conan said reaching into her pocket and taking out a couple of sheets, to prove her point. Yes, yes, I know about your peculiar bloodline Conan, but this paper is different. It's special paper, he said holding up the brownish sheets of paper. How did you know about my bloodline? She said with a confused face. Weren't you paying attention to when I told Nagato I knew everything? Naruto said crossing his arms. So what's the paper for sensei? Yahiko asked smiling wide. It's to determine your natural affinity. But, shouldn't you already know that? Since you know everything? Yahiko asked sweetly. Well I can't know about your personal affinity. Naruto responded. But you told Nagato and Konan that you knew everything. Naruto caught on to what Yahiko's plot was. Do I have to put you on timeout? he said lightly glaring at the smiling boy. So you don't know anything, do you? He finally said after staring in Naruto's eyes for a couple of minutes. Naruto's eyes flashed gray before he heard laughing. Bested by a child, I don't think you should take sensei's offer for succeeding after him. She said causing the three children to snicker quietly. Naruto slapped his forehead betrayal. Come on Suheim, you're supposed to be on my side. He whined drinking in her appearance. She was now wearing a simple white v-neck blouse, to let her, pillows, breathe. Underneath, she had a dark gray mesh shirt. She wore dark red pants that had the ankles tapped off. An enlarged medical pouch was secured onto her lower back. Looking good, Naruto commented. Tsunade scoffed, I better be. She said putting her hair, into their individual ponytails. Don't try to change the subject. How could you just get bested like that? I might have to think twice about marrying you. She joked. Naruto frowned at her joke, fine, let's make a bet. Tsunade smiled, you said the magic word. She said lightly bouncing, which caused her assets to jiggle and keep moving long after she stopped. What are the stakes? If I win, you have to promise not to kill me during labor. He said, confusing the kids. 
She nodded, knowing that he knew that she was pregnant. Deal and if I win, she said taking up a thinking pose. I'll tell you later, she said smiling. Naruto nodded and turned back to the kids. All right the bet is, if I can guess their affinities correctly, without the use of the chakra sheets. Tsunade agreed, completely disregarding his vanishing Rinnegan. Naruto turned to the three children. All right, let me explain how this works. It's simple really, if you're fire, the paper will ignite and turn to ash. If you're wind, the paper will split in two. If you're lightning, the paper will wrinkle. If you're earth, the paper will turn to dirt and crumble away. And if you're water, the paper will become wet. He said finishing explaining. All right go ahead sensei. Let's see if you know this. Yahiko said. Naruto thought for a minute. Okay. He said placing a single sheet in front of each child. Yahiko, your affinity is water. He said. Concentrate your chakra and channel it into the paper. He instructed. Yahiko nodded and touched the paper, and was surprised when it immediately became soaking wet. You got lucky. Yahiko said taking his hand off. Naruto grinned and looked towards Nagato. Your affinity is wind, while well, I should said your strongest is wind. Since your Rinnegan is going to let you have all five. He said watching as Nagato put his own hand on the paper in front of him. It split into four, and each individual section, burned, crumbled, turned to dirt, and got wet. Told you, Naruto said smiling. It was two for two, he looked at Conan and took a second. Conan, I believe yours is, he paused making it dramatic. Lightning, he said smiling. Conan went to touch her paper and was surprised to see it crumbling under her palm. Ha, huh, three for three, take that you smartass, he said pointing at Yahiko. Said child just sat and grumbled to himself. You still got lucky, he said, well there you go I win. Naruto said standing from his crouched position. He looked at Tsunade to see her frowning. What's wrong Suhaim? Naruto asked hugging Tsunade. I just wanted to have our child be a medic nin. Just like his mommy, she said. At this Naruto became confused before he smiled. What, that was your end of the bargain. Of course, our child could learn medical ninjutsu. You were going to him or her anyway. He said smiling. Yeah I was huh? Tsunade said giggling and kissing him lightly. Naruto deepened the kiss and hugged her tighter. Ew. The children chimed. Get a room. What? This is my fiance. And plus you're in it. He said sticking his tongue out at them. Only for Tsunade to put it back in her mouth. Can we eat already? Nagato said remembering about breakfast. Naruto ended the kiss. Oh yeah. The clone finished a couple of minutes ago. He said as they all left the room and sat down around the hotel's dining table. Naruto looked at his plate to see, eggs and sausage, with hash browns and most of all, three pancakes stacked high. Unfortunately that was about five minutes ago. Now all that remained was syrupy residue and bits of eggs. The silvery-haired shinobi leaned back and patted his stomach in content, as he looked around the table. Like him everybody had the same amount of food. And also like him they were rubbing their bellies in content. Well the children were, Tsunade was picking her teeth with a senban needle, to remove some excess sausage skin. That was a delicious breakfast Naruto-kun. Suande said smiling at her fiancé. Why thank you Suhaim. Naruto said smiling at her, before he turned to the children. How did you like the meal you three? They each perked up and extended their plates. Can we have seconds? They each said with smiles on their faces. Naruto rubbed his chin in thought. Maybe later, now is the time to get you three some better clothes. The three children frowned, before the prospect of getting new things entered their minds and they smiled brightly. Really, we're going to get new clothes. Conan said with hearts in her eyes. Ah geez, females and their urge to shop. Naruto nearly forced himself to think. Conan, Tsunade, you two should go together. I'll take Nagato and Yahiko. He said sweetly to the girls in the room. Of course, you would probably buy her things she didn't want. Tsunade said hugging the blue-haired child against her bosom. Naruto appeared behind Nagato and Yahiko and rubbed each of their heads. So then it's set. Naruto said smirking. He looked at Yahiko. You ready to get ready smartass? I'm ready as I can be stupid. Yahiko said making Naruto's eyebrow twitch. Nagato could feel the aura around Naruto and shuddered. I think you should stop with the insults Yahiko. The redhead whispered, never, it's fun. The orange-haired boy whispered back, oh I'm gonna make you boys strong. Naruto said smirking as they disappeared in a body flicker. 
Tsunade and Conan just stood there looking at the interaction and with sweat dropping. Naruto sensei isn't going to torture me too, is he? Conan asked with concern in her voice and eyes. Tsunade looked down at the cute girl and frowned. Um, let's go shopping and not think about that. She said ushering the blue net to the door. XX. Naruto walked around the small village with his two students, children in tow. Yes now that he's thinking about it, he kind of considered the three orphans as his children. I think it would have happened even if Nagato wasn't my cousin, he thought smiling as Yahiko grabbed his hand, dragging him towards a clothes store. Come on stupid, in here. Yahiko continued to taunt. Naruto just ignored the insult and allowed himself to be dragged by the child. Nagato just followed them, already having given up on stopping Yahiko from insulting his cousin. Hello, welcome to my clothing store. I hope you enjoy your shopping, a sweet middle-aged woman said. Naruto smiled at her and nodded a thanks. It was then that he noticed that Yahiko had let go of his hand and was currently running through the store. Naruto looked down at his cousin, Nagato, why don't you go find something to wear? He said nudging the child towards some racks. Hi, Itoko sensei. Nagato said walking forward and joining Yahiko in shopping. Naruto raised his eyebrow at Nagato's title for him. Well, it's better than stupid or idiot or ignoramus. How does he even know that word? He thought incredulously. Ah, oh, your children are adorable. Naruto heard a voice from behind him. He turned to see the shopkeeper smiling. What, they're not my kids. But I do think of them as my children. Naruto said softly with a smile. So, you're a single parent raising two young boys. That's kind of why. She said softly finding Naruto incredibly handsome and brave for raising two children. Naruto was about to answer when his mouth zipped shut and sweat started rolling all over his face. I'd hate to tell you, but that hunk of man is already taken. The woman turned around to see Tsunade standing there, with Conan by her side. And how do you know? She asked unaware of the consequences. I'm his fiance, that's how. The blonde said cracking her knuckles. Fortunately, Naruto was able to quell Tsunade's irritation by lightly grasping her fists in his. Calm down, Suheim. She didn't know the situation of the topic. He spoke softly. While Naruto was calming Tsunade down, Conan joined her fellow orphan family. How long have you two been here? She asked eyeing their separate piles of clothing. A couple of minutes and we've already got three outfits, each. Yahiko said looking at his clothes in acceptance. Are you just now starting to shop? Nagato asked from his position on a nearby bench, trying on a pair of black shoes. The blue net shook her head, no, this was like, the second place we went to since leaving the hotel. What? How did you already shop at a different store in the span of no less than 10 minutes? They both shouted, before only Yahiko spoke. Conan giggled at their shocked faces. The last place was really good. It was too bad, they didn't have any more clothes that could fit me. She said smiling as she looked at the adult couple. Naruto currently had Tsunade's face in his hands, palm on each cheek. Tsunade, when are you going to calm down? He asked a little irritated. As soon as I have this baby. She nearly screamed. Naruto growled, but that's nine months away. By now Tsunade had wrestled his hands free of her face and her scowl could be seen as bright as day. Well maybe you should have thought against knocking me up. She said crossing her arms over her large breast. Naruto smirked at the blonde. I knocked you up because I love you. And I can't wait for you to have your baby. He said smiling. Naruto didn't get a response. Other than Tsunade smothering him in her bosom. With light tears rolling down her face. Hormones. Naruto droned in his mind. The aim orphan's sweat dropped at the scene. I hope she's not like this all the time. Yahiko whispered, in case she could hear them. I don't know, Ka-chan wasn't that moody when we left the hotel. Conan said watching as Tsunade released Naruto, lest he end up dead form lack of oxygen. Ka-chan? When did that happen? Yahiko asked, as he was always the brash one. Well yeah, I consider Tsunade-sama, my new mother. Don't you feel the same towards Naruto-sensei? He's like our new father. Conan questioned as she absently caressed her origami flower in her hair. I know I do. Even though he's already my cousin, I can already feel a bond forming between us. Nagato kind of meekly. Well I don't. I don't want to be related to an idiot. Yahiko said, obviously doubting his true feelings. What? Naruto yelled from across the room. He stomped towards the youngsters cracking his knuckles. 
Ooh, I can't wait until we get to the village. He mused evilly as two shadow clones appeared to take the clothes to the front to be paid for. Naruto's features softened as he looked at Conan. You already have what you want right Conan-chan? Naruto asked. Conan nodded her head with a smile on her face. Hi to sensei. She chirped happily. Naruto smiled and tussled her hair a little, being mindful of the paper flower in her hair. Good, he said standing to his full height. After we return to the hotel and you three get dressed, we'll continue towards Konoha. He said turning and grabbing Tsunade's hand and walking out of the store with the clones carrying the bags. What just happened? Why was the idiot so nice to you, when he was mean to me and Nagato? Yahiko asked as they trailed behind the adults, keeping his voice at a whisper. Whoa, speak for yourself. He's only being mean to you, because you keep calling him an idiot. Nagato said with an equal whisper. Yeah, maybe if you stop calling him an idiot then he'll lighten up on you. Conan said as she lightly flicked Yahiko in the forehead. Yahiko held his forehead in indignation and slightly glared at Conan. What you do that for? She giggled at his mad face and smiled. Because you deserve it, she said as they finally arrived at the hotel. Naruto smiled as he had heard everything the kids were say. The pleasures of chakra. Alright you three, go get dressed and I'll have a clone get lunch ready. Yahiko and Nagato immediately grabbed their respective bag from the clone and ran into the room. Conan walked in front of Tsunade and smiled. Tsunade returned the smile and unsealed her scroll. Out from the scroll was five large bags of clothes. I really shouldn't be surprised, but damn that's a lot of clothes. Naruto said with wide eyes. Tsunade giggled, you know I love to shop whenever I can. She said rubbing her head, just like Naruto would always do. Naruto rolled his eyes and watched as Conan gathered an outfit and walked into the other bedroom. He nodded at the clone that had yet to dispel and it began the making of lunch, grumbling about lazy bosses. So what are you going to do, when we get to the village? If you're serious like I know you are about this marriage then being an Anbu captain isn't a good idea. Tsunade said as she and Naruto cuddled on a couch. If you know that, then it's pretty obvious what I'm going to do. Naruto said before receiving a small and yet painful hit to his chest. OWW, no super hits. He chastised the blonde. Tsunade smirked, oh, you'll know if the punch is super. She said snickering and lightly pinching his chest. Naruto rolled his eyes again and leaned his head against her own head, which resided on part of his chest. But yeah, when we get to Konoha, it's straight to Nisan to tell him I resign from the Anbu Corps. It's been five years anyway, a year past a full term. He said slowly playing with one of her ponytails. Speaking of your brother, do you think he's going to finally fund the training of field medics to be a part of every squad? She asked slightly raising her head to look into his eyes. Naruto smiled, definitely, now that the war is over he can focus on that. I'm sure Sakumo or Orochimaru has already told him the news. In Konoha, Hiruzen Serutobi sat in his desk. He had grown a lot older, now nearing his 40s. He had also grown in strength and respect. Thanks to Sakumo, he now knew the war was over. The civilians and ninja were already in the streets celebrating their victory, the second time the Leaf Village has escaped destruction by their enemies. This war did gain a couple of things, like with the surrender of Suna, they had agreed to sign an alliance treaty with their previous enemies. The treaty was faced with animosity on both sides of the signing. Like the honored siblings, mostly Chio, had a deep resentment towards both Tsunade, for the countless times she found cures for her poison. And most of all Sakumo, the white fang of Konoha, had killed her parents. Ebizo didn't have any resentment, because he knew it was part of war. Here is inside as he thought of the people who were responsible for the outcome. Naruto and Sakumo, those two really put themselves in all kinds of danger to destroy their enemies. Kai helped also, but she wasn't much of a heavy fighter like her teammates. She's more into illusionary techniques and sensing enemies. Hiruzen thought about Sakumo's wife. He had married them as soon as they were 17. Those two, Kai and Sakumo, loved each other deeply and married despite a war being active. They tried to convince Naruto to marry Tsunade, but he was stubborn about Tsunade being further targeted because of her status and all that noise. Thinking about Tsunade made him think about the rest of his team and their contribution to the war. Orochimaru was ruthless and calm as ever always striving to overachieve whenever it was possible. 
Jiraiya was both idiotic and heroic in rescuing many platoons of shinobi with his large arsenal of techniques. And back to Tsunade, who he felt was also the reason they won the war. If it was not for her, many counteractions against Chiyo's poison, Konoha would have suffered far more losses in this war. It was too bad she and Naruto haven't wed yet. Thinking about Tsunade made him think about his own love life. His wife, Bawako, had gave birth to a healthy son. His son's name was Kensai Serutobi, named after Bawako's father. He was already showing himself to be a competent shinobi at his age of 10. He and his wife had been married for about 13 years. It was because of her that, he embodied the will of fire so fervently. He and Naruto, his little adoptive brother, turned dangerous man. The will of fire was literally blazing with them both. Hiruzen heard a knock at his door inside. I guess break time is over. He thought as he signaled for the person to enter with the word, enter. The person turned out to be his secretary, sir, you have a Danzo here. The redhead said, hum, what could Danzo want? Hiruzen thought curiously. Yeah, sure bring him in. No sooner did he say that, the man in question walked in from behind the secretary. He had bandages around his head, covering his right eye, and his right sleeve was tied neatly to prevent it from hanging loosely. He still wore a Junin outfit and he didn't seem to get weaker, due to his missing appendage. He held his left hand up, signaling for his two subordinates to leave him to his privacy with the Hokage. They nodded and vanished. The professor raised his eyebrows, was that your personal route you've been working on these past five years? He asked interlacing his fingers and having them overlapping his mouth. Danzo nodded, hi, they were a little difficult to train, due to the fact that my regime is brutal. But it panned out alright, with a little side effects. He muttered the last part, but it was still heard by the Hokage. Side effects? What kind of side effects? Here is in questioned narrowing his eyes at his advisor. Danzo ignored the look and gazed to where he knew one of the hidden Anbu were, well hiding. Well as you know, your Anbu, handle dangerous missions that have reached your attention. They are strong and loyal to you and most importantly they retain their emotions for when they're off duty. He began explaining. The Warhawk's eyes quickly glanced at Hiruzen. Well my root, are pretty much the same with some rather minor tweaks. What kind of tweaks are you speaking of? The Fire Shadow asked rather curiously since, his knowledge of the group was rather scarce. Well, like your Anbu they handle dangerous missions, except these missions, don't ever reach the light of day. Meaning that we protect the, root, of the great tree of Konoha from the shadows. He stopped and broke eye contact with the Hokage. They are also only loyal to me. He added waiting for the outburst, but it never came. So you're telling me that, you have a group of individuals that go on even more dangerous missions than my own Anbu. He deducted letting the information settle in his mind. How do they feel about that? He finally asked. Not a damn thing. He said making Hiruzen's eyes widen. It seems sometime during their training, their minds broke completely. They're completely emotionless, they don't feel a thing. Their prime objective is the mission. It's amazing how much success they've had in the field. He said crazily grinning wide. Seru Tobi stood to his feet, from behind his desk. Danzo, that's inhuman. You've took the emotions from human beings to complete your own gains. No, not my gains. The villages. You know that I love the village and want to protect it more than I want to protect anything else. Root does just that. You are the leaves that bathe in the sun, while I am the roots that grow in the dark. Sarutobi glared at Danzo for a while. He knew that Root has been busy and from the vague understanding, the missions they went on were the dirtiest of the dirty missions Shinobi could go on. But he couldn't deny that they were essential for their prowess in the stealth game. He then walked towards the window and looked over his village. Seeing all the smiling faces made him smile, before he imagined them emotionless with a sword in hand. He closed his eyes tight. I'm sorry Danzo, but I'm going to have to disband your project. This angered Danzo, what? Did you not hear what I've just told you? I've heard every single word. And don't get me wrong, during a war they are outstanding and highly appreciated. Then why are yo? But that's just it, the war is over. They are no longer needed. We have entered the era of peace and Root is chaotic. Dismissed. He said waving his hand at the man. But Hokog, Danzo tried to question, only to have a force of key dropped on him. I said dismissed. He ordered keeping an eye on Danzo's reflection. Danzo's eyes narrowed and darkened. He gave a short bow and glared at Serutobi's back. You're a fool here isn't. P. 
Peace in a shinobi world will not last forever. He said as he turned and left the office. I have a bad feeling about the future. Here is an mused. XX. Danzo walked out of the large red building and was soon joined by his two agents. I take it by your emotionless face that the Hokage didn't take it well. The male agent on his left said as the trio soon took to the rooftops. Danzo kept his gaze ahead. It could have been worse. How so Danzo-sama? The female on the right asked. I could have went into detail about how you lost your emotions. Danzo said. Though the two didn't have any emotions, they couldn't help but shiver at the thought of the training they went through. Having to kill the person they thought of as a sibling just to survive was horrible. The amount of mental conditioning they each went through after was just as horrible and the final fight against Danzo himself always put each of them in the ward. Danzo would absolutely admit that medical ninjutsu was a great asset to him and had to applaud Suande on her ingenious amount of knowledge on the subject. Her and the other two were a strong team, slightly trailing behind Naruto and his own team. One of his agents had Juist returned from the battlefield telling him that Tsunade, Orochimaru, and Jiraiya were crowned the Densetsu no Sanin by Hanzo of the Salamander, just before the Futago no Jinokami came and finished the job. More importantly Naruto, laid waste to the man. Naruto, the Senso no Kami, God of War. Or Shinobi no Kami, God of Shinobi. Whatever he wanted to be called, was truly a force of nature, just like his namesake, Maelstrom. Even without that bloodline of his, he was considered an S-ranked ninja, and he knew that Hiruzen was even considering stepping down to have Naruto take the throne, so to speak, next. Are you really going to let the Hokage disband what you've worked so hard on? The male agent said knocking Danzo from his thoughts. The Warhawk scoffed, quite the opposite. I now know that giving Serutobi that update was a bad idea, so we're going to have to do some relocating. It's time for us to really go underground. He said emotionlessly, with Naruto. Naruto and Tsunade were walking with the AIM orphans, now dubbed their unofficial children, who were positioned in front of them. Yahiko, the official leader of the three, wore a dark red shirt and a pair of black shorts. With a pair of black sandals. Nagato wore a pair of black pants and a similar dark red shirt. He also wore a pair of black sandals. Conan wore a white blouse, similar to Tsunade's own white blouse, and a pair of black pants. Ultimately they looked like a team. All they needed was shinobi gear and the skills to go with them. Naruto-kun, did we leave anything at the hotel? Tsunade asked from her place beside the silver-haired man. Naruto raised his eyebrow at the weird question. No Suheim, I have everything sealed up. He said taking the scroll out of his pouch for proof. Why such an odd question? He asked the blonde female curiously. She shrugged, no reason. She said. Naruto gazed at her for a while. You're bored huh? He came to the conclusion, causing her to nod at her head. Me too. He said hanging his head solemnly. Maybe if we were already in the village then, we wouldn't be bored anymore. Tsunade analyzed, because then they would have things to do, except walk slowly to their destination. Yeah and then I would be able to tortu, I mean train those three. He said chuckling as he rubbed the back of his head. Not to mention, they can go to the academy. With my father, he thought knowing that Minato was found, just like he was. And was now in the academy learning the basics. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. They could learn their basics, while we teach them more advanced things. They going to be the strongest group ever to come out of the academy, since, well us. Tsunade said lightly bouncing causing her bust to jiggling within Naruto's sight. Naruto grinned, hypnotized by the cleavage. Yes to the academy. He droned before shaking his head. Yeah, we better hurry up. Going this pace is starting to get to me. He said making seal less clones before they snatched up the surprised children and they took to the trees. With this new speed, we shall be in the village within the hour. Naruto said as trees literally blurred by them. An hour later, Naruto laughed as he Yahiko continued to curse him for just snatching him up like that. Calm down, Hiko-chan. Naruto said between chuckles. No, that was just mean. I was unprepared and I got a little sick. The orange-haired child said, his face red with anger. Naruto stopped laughing and frowned. I'm sorry Yahiko-kun. Maybe I set the speed a little too fast. Can you forgive me? He asked crouching down to his level and laying a hand on his shoulder. The other three waited with bated breath, hoping that Yahiko would accept his apology. 
They weren't disappointed when Yahiko suddenly wrapped Naruto in a hug. Apology accepted. Too san. The Uzumaki stopped frowning and smiled softly and returned the hug. He had to remember that Yahiko was without a family for a long time and it was his job to fill in that void. Naruto released the hug and kept his hand on Yahiko's shoulder as they walked closer to the village. Ah, Naruto-san, Tsunade-san, welcome back to the village. One of the Chunin gate guards said bowing. How's it going Riko-san? Still a Chunin gate guard I see. Naruto said waving at the female Chunin. Hi, it's a relaxing job and I don't feel like advancing a rank. Riko said slightly blushing. She was always blushing, everywhere she went. Oh and who's the cute little munchkins? She said noticing the three kids behind both Naruto and Tsunade. Tsunade chose this moment to enter the conversation. These three are going to be our children, as soon as we get to the Hokage. The redhead one is Nagato-kun. The brunette is Konan-chan. And the orange-haired one is Yahiko-kun. Thankfully Nagato's hair was covering his eyes and Riko couldn't see the Rinnegan on full blast like it always was. Come on you three say hi to the nice lady. Naruto said softly scooting Yahiko and Konan forward, while Tsunade did the same with Nagato. Hello Riko-san, they said in unison. Naruto-sensei can we go now? Yahiko asked pulling on Naruto's pants leg as he futilely tried to drag Naruto towards the Hokage building. Naruto chuckled. All right Riko-san, I'll be going now. I still think you should take your Jonin exams. He said finally letting Yahiko drag him away. As soon as they were away from the gate, they noticed that people were out and about, celebrating the victory of winning the war. Wow people are really letting loose. Tsunade commented, seeing all the sake in the hands of adults while kids ran through the streets. Yeah, it's great that they're enjoying themselves. Naruto said as people began cheering him knowing he was a big reason they were victorious. Hurry, Yahiko said dragging him harder. Naruto and the others chuckled and after five minutes they were entering the large red building. Naruto waved to the many passing secretaries and soon they appeared at the large door with the leader of the village behind it. Now I want you three to be on your best behavior. He said only looking at Yahiko, who looked sheepish at being singled out. Hi Nisama, Naruto said busting through the door completely contradicting what he just told the kids. Here is inside, slowly shaking his head. While it was normal for Naruto to call him Nisama and bust through the door, it was starting to get frustrating. Hello, to you too Naruto o Tuto. Here is in said cracking open an eye. I see you brought more than Hanzo home with you. He said already knowing that the silver-haired captain would be bring the previous leader of Aim's body to be analyzed and all that good stuff. Naruto nodded taking out said scroll and throwing it at a random corner, only for it to disappear. And Anbu already transporting it to the place that did the dissections and the experiments and all that good stuff. Hi Nisama, these three followed us, shortly after defeating Hanzo. I think you'll be surprised that all of them are special. He said smiling. Hiruzen had the feeling that this was going to be a surprising meeting. Enlighten me Naruto-kun, how special could they be? Naruto smiled. Well this one, he said indicating Yahiko. Uh, I don't really know yet, but I know he's pretty smart for his age. He said lightly tapping on his head. He moved over to Conan, this one has a very special bloodline that allows her to control paper. She might even be able to turn into a flock of paper when she gets stronger. He said knowing that much, since Jiraiya told him when they were training for those three years. Finally Naruto moved to Nagato. This one is the most surprising Nisama. Not only is he my cousin, he said watching Hiruzen's eyes widen, since that meant that the little boy was an Uzumaki and the only Uzumakis left after the destruction of their village were Mito, who was very old, Naruto, Kashina, who came to become the next Jinchuriki and was currently in the academy, and now this little boy. Before he could even ask how he knew this, Naruto moved the strands of hair away from his eyes, but he also has the Rinnegan. He said finally letting the Hokage's head drop on his desk, completely out of it. Tsunade giggled, he took that well. And that's not even all the news I had to tell him. Naruto commented chuckling also. An hour later, after recovering and learning the other information Naruto had to offer, here is in mulled over the information given. So you're telling me that, you want these three to be your children and students. You want to resign from the core and return to being an elite Jonin and a sensei at that. You're finally going to marry Tsunade because she's now pregnant, 
Did I leave anything out? Here is and said leaning against his hand. The spiky haired John and rubbed his chin in thought. Yeah, you forgot the part where my team becomes stronger than your own. Naruto said smirking proudly. Naruto's smirk became a grimace as he was poked in the side. He turned his head to see Tsunade whistling innocently. You better be careful Oto Oto, I've trained my students to near perfection. They've even went up against Hanzo the salamander himself. And I killed him myself. True, only after my team wore him out. My ass they did. Naruto scoffed before getting poked again. Ouch Tsunade Chan that hurts. Naruto groaned. Stop arguing with Sensei. She chided. Naruto glared at Hiruzen's smirk. This isn't over Nisama. You might have trained your team to near perfection, but my team is going to be absolute. He said leaving the room. The three new, official, members of Naruto's family sensed the tension in the room leave with Naruto and decided to leave with him. Tsunade watched her children leave and sighed. Did you really have to do all that sensei? The blonde said resting her hands on her hips. Hiruzen smiled, you already know I had too. I did the same with you three. I told you three, what you couldn't accomplish and sat back and watched you accomplish everything. Naruto's going to do the same to his team. Tsunade frowned, knowing how insanely brutal her sensei's training was. She mentally shuddered at having to think about it. And if she knew her Naruto-kun, his training was even more brutal. Who knew a Nara could be so vicious? Tsunade thought about the infamous man who trained Naruto, Sakumo and Kai. His name was Shinzu Nara, like all Naras he was both incredibly smart and equally lazy. But unlike other Naras he was easily motivated. His ambition to put his team through hell was easily accomplished, she was glad they returned from that hell. She was interrupted from her thoughts when the door opened. She smiled when one of the subjects of her thoughts walked through. Tsunade-chan, I didn't know you were back. One Hitaki Kai said closing the distance between them and hugging her. She was a very beautiful woman. She had long and beautiful snow white hair that reached her back but was currently in a single ponytail. Exotic crystal blue eyes and plump lips covered in blue lipstick. She wore a dark blue dress that went to the middle of thighs. Over her shoulders was a white jacket. Her dress was slit both down the side of her left leg and also down her chest. She had a large C-cup bust and another bump, signifying her pregnant status. To finish it off, she had on a pair of regular sandals, because she was pregnant. Oh wow, you look amazing Kai-chan, I didn't know you were pregnant? She said hugging her again. What's the occasion? She asked this time indicating the clothes. Nothing really. Me and Sakumo Koi are just out enjoying each other's company. Kai said. Tsunade rose her eyebrow. Really, then what are you doing here? Kai smiled widely. We sensed Naruto's return long ago. Being a sensor I'm able to judge someone's chakra and I can tell that Naruto's usual calm chakra was all over the place in happiness. Sakumo was able to prevent me from coming to see what caused it for only an hour. Well here I am, now tell me the good news. She said smiling and preventing herself from using her skills to find out what, since it'll ruin the surprise. Tsunade giggled a little and lightly scratched the back of her head. Well, xx. Wow Naruto, I leave you alone for a couple of days and you already have three kids with one on the way. Sakumo said shaking his head. He was only wearing a dark blue button shirt and white pants and white sandals, while his wife had his white jacket. His short white hair was, kind of presentable. It was still spiky and shaggy at the same time, the ponytail in the back was slightly cut shorter and neatly tied. Naruto chuckled while rubbing the back of his head. His official children snickered in their seats by the two adults. What can I say, a lot of things happened after you left. I can tell. So this is your team? He said looking at the kids. Naruto smiled and looked at the children. Yeah, I'm going to torture the hell out of them. He whispered. Naruto and Sakumo smiled when they heard a yell of happiness. I guess Kai-chan found out about my pregnant wife-to-be. Naruto said chuckling. Yeah, it's surprising that she just ignored these three here. Sakumo said slightly disappointed. Naruto nodded, she must have only been focused on me and Tsunade. That and these three are still new to the village. Just when Naruto said that Kai came out of nowhere and wrapped her arms around the Uzumaki, being mindful of the large belly. Congratulations Naruto ni. Kai squealed putting all the hugging power she could. Naruto chuckled. Arigato Kai wanichin. Naruto said returning the hug. 
Feeling her large stomach, Naruto chuckled. Wow, you're really blowing up Wanichan. He said releasing the hug. He then rubbed the large stomach. How far along are you now? Five months. She said happily now joining in the rubbing. I can't wait until I have this baby so I can get into my sexier dresses for Saku-kun. So when are you going to have your wedding? The snow-haired woman asked. It's going to be maybe a week away. Tsunade said walking down the stairs. Kai let out a small gasp. Why so far away? She said looking at Naruto. We have to get the children settled into the house. Also we have to show them around the village and get them familiar with it. Naruto listed off some reason, to which Kai only heard one word. Children? You already have children. She said causing Naruto to smile and point at the three who were whispering to each other. Ah, oh, they're so adorable. She squealed and quickly appeared in front of them, comically hugging all three. After a few minutes of just seeing Kai smother the former orphans, Tsunade stopped it with a clearing of her throat. Kai blushed in embarrassment and backed up a little. What are your names little darlings? She asked still quite bubbly. Konan Uzumaki, the blue net said giggling at the older woman. Yahiko Uzumaki, the orange-haired child said plainly. Nagato Uzumaki, Nagato smiled being the only one who didn't have his name change. Oh they're so adorable, Kai said again, so I guess the redhead here is a true Uzumaki, she said indicating his ripple patterned eyes. Yay, that's my cousin. Naruto sighed having to explain that for about the second maybe third time since they united. Yes Kaiheim, that's his cousin. Now they have a lot to do, so can we get back to our date? Sakumo grumbled crossing his arms. Kai stood to her full height. Find Sakumo-kun. She pouted also crossing her arms. Until next time Naruto-kun, Tsunade-chan, adorable kids. She said walking to Sakumo and letting him lead her out of the building. Naruto watched his genin team walk out of the building. Well, now it's time to show these three their new home. Tsunade nodded and gestured for the kids to follow them. With that Naruto and company began their journey to the clan district of the village. It took them little over 20 minutes to get there, because they toured the former orphans on the way. The orphans were surprised to see such a regular house. Sure it was big, but compared to the Hayuga mansion across the way, it was tame. It was a large two-story building that had some cherry blossom trees framing the walkway. A large lake was in the back, next door to a separate training room. From what they can tell, just from looking from the outside, it had to have at least six bedrooms. How many bathrooms was unknown due to the fact that they only seen six windows from the front of the house. Wow, they exclaimed still quite amazed from the realization that they were going to be living there. Get comfortable you three, because after the wedding you're going to miss it. He said smirking, ignoring Tsunade's poke at his ribs. The three rolled their eyes, but knowing that he wasn't playing. Stop scaring them Naruto-kun. Tsunade chastised, Naruto scoffed, scared? They don't look scared at all. Whatever, show them around the place, I need to go somewhere. Naruto said resting his hand on Nagato's head. Where are you going and why do you need to take Nagato with you? She curiously asked. I'm taking Nagato to see Ba-chan. She's still the head of the Uzumaki. Naruto said leaning in to kiss Tsunade. She slightly moaned, hurry back and say hi to grandma for me. The blonde said smiling as the Uzumakis vanished in a body flicker. Yahiko and Konan looked at Tsunade in slight concern. What's going to happen to Nagato-kun? Konan asked. Hum? Tsunade sounded, barely hearing what Konan asked as she was still immersed in the feeling of kissing Naruto. Oh yeah, Nagato is going to be fine. You have nothing to worry about Konan-chan. Now let's get you two settled. Tsunade said leading them into the house. XX. Naruto appeared deep in the residential district of the village. A few children were still out playing before the sun completely disappeared. Mothers sat in chairs, already tired from their short celebration of winning the war. So you said this, Ba Chan, person was still the head of the clan. How come you haven't took over? Nagato asked. We actually had that conversation after we finished fighting. Naruto said looking down at the young red head. You fought the clan head. What are you crazy? Nagato said knowing that Naruto was obviously crazy. I'm not crazy, but man was that a good fight. It happened about a decade ago. I fought two Uzumaki women in the span of 24 hours. He thought as he began thinking about the fight. Flashback a decade ago, the 12-year-old Naruto walked through the forest, 
accompanied by Mito Uzumaki, who was around her late fifties and still looking like she thirty. Her long dark red hair, freely cascade down her back and all accessories were put away, as they would only get in the way. Are you ready for the fight of your life? The Uzumaki clan head spoke, dressed in a simple and yet elegant dark blue battle suit. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Naruto spoke still wearing the same attire he wore while fighting his mother, which he just finished not even a day ago. It's time to see just what the hell the Kayubi wants, he thought. Good because I have a few conditions for the fight. She said as they entered a fairly large clearing, also inhabited by a large lake. Naruto clenched his fist a couple of times, tell him. He simply said moving across the clearing, I want to see how you fight without the Rinnegan, we must remember that these eyes are just a tool for us to use. We mustn't get dependent on them. Mito said temporarily activating her Rinnegan only to deactivate them just as quickly. Trust me Ba-chan, I know that. He said, HMPH. She grunted as Crimson Chakra began oozing out of her body. Naruto stood in shock as the Kitsune's cloak wrapped around Mito's body. He knew how it felt to have it wrap around him, but experiencing the pure malice and hate wash over his body was a new experience for him. So this is what everybody's been feeling every time I used the fox's cloak. Naruto thought as he felt the pure killer intent crash down on him. Shit, this is too much. He cursed in his mind. Only one. He didn't have time to figure out how to counteract the feeling, because soon, Mito appeared in front of him and punched him hard. His small body flew across the clearing and literally skipped across the water. Fuck, what the hell? Fucking Kayubi. The silvery-haired preteen reached for the bank of the lake and lifted his body out of the water. He rested on his back and looked in the sky. He noticed a spot in the sky that seemed to be getting closer. He cursed again as it quickly dropped on his position, making a large water-filled crater. The preteen panted quickly, he barely had time to substitute out of there. Damn was I this fast when I was using the Kayubi's cloak? Naruto thought. Only one. Naruto growled in annoyance as the Kayubi's voice popped up again. That damn fox is fucking up my concentration, he thought shaking his head. Unknown to Naruto, Kayubi was also in Mito's head. The main Kayubi, inside of Mito, was being heard more clearly. Only one, only one Kayubi. It spoke pushing more chakra through the, thought of to be completely reinforced, seal. Naruto looked and noticed a fully formed second tail grew from the cloak. He sighed and his fingers lit on fire, a different elemental symbol on each finger. Let's see if this works. He mumbled as he blasted forward. He thrust his palm forward, before his thought process thought of something, Wait a minute, where's her seal at? He thought since her abdomen was in clear view and no seal was there. Fuck, he cursed as he was unable to dodge the punch that rocketed him back towards the lake. This time he skipped across the hard ground and into a very dense oak tree. He coughed up blood as his stomach crashed into the oak. He was starting to get pissed at being a punching bag. He thought of something and created a clone. It was time, but in the meantime he had to keep Mito away from his clone. Lightning began crackling around his body and he felt his entire body become slightly numb with all the lightning around it. He grinned at the woman who was busy grabbing her head and swinging it around as a third tail sprouted. He took notice of the new appendage and upped the electrical output. Raiden no Yoroi, lightning style armor. The most useful lightning technique ever. He thought as he literally disappeared. He was in front of Mito in a split second and it was her turn to fly through the clearing and fly she did. Naruto's toe wasn't even on the ground for a millisecond before he gave chase after the flying woman. He was pleased his lightning cloaked body allowed him to reach her in no time at all, but damn was it taxing on his body. Naruto quickly enclosed his fist together, making a single double-handed fist. He quickly slammed that on Mito's yukai cloaked body, sending her straight into the earth. After he did that he quickly backed up and waited for her to emerge. After three seconds the ground started shaking and a pillar of demonic energy shot into the sky. That's not good. Naruto thought as that was sure to bring more attention to their fight. Two seconds after the pillar of Yuki, Naruto's body was grabbed by arm of Yuki. The lightning and Yuki were fighting each other for dominance, so Naruto didn't feel anything from being grabbed. He looked down to see six tails of pure destruction swaying behind Mito. Her body was crouched and a skeletal structure was above her, acting like some kind of foxbone armor. 
He cursed and his eyes flashed, Shinra Tensai. He said forcing the arm off of him. He kept the eyes blazing as he faced off against the six tails. Is this what Pain experienced when we fought? Fuck I have to figure a way to calm her down. Naruto thought as his clone dispelled and he received power of the sage. He smirked as he blasted forward, Mito doing the same. Punches, kicks, grab attempts, and mini Shinra Tensai's were used in a span of a few seconds. Until a lucky Rasengan connected with Mito's Yuki cloaked abdomen. He was immediately blasted backwards. His cloak vanished as did his sage mode. Use it, it's your only chance at survival. Use it. Almost immediately a second pillar of Yuki rose to pierce the sky. But it wasn't from Mito, but from Naruto. The previously thought of to be absorbed Kayubi, finally emerged from deep within Naruto. Now the silver-haired preteen was also cloaked in a six-tailed, bone armor state. Now the two Jinchuriki faced each other and met in a clash of power that instantly cratered the area. After that everything went dark for both of them. XX. Naruto's eyes opened to the vision of darkness. It was only after his eyes fully focused that he noticed the pipes. He was in his sewer detailed mindscape, a place he hasn't been in for years. He noticed he was floating in water and stood up, said water reaching his waist. It's never reached that high before. Naruto thought as he noticed a strong red glow in the distance. Of course he knew that he had to go there. So go he did. As he was going the glow was getting stronger and the pipes that indicated his silver chakra was getting skinnier. Soon after a couple of twists and turns he stepped into a familiar room that seemed to have gotten larger. He noticed a fox on his left, behind his standard cage, with the familiar sealed tag keeping the gate closed. In his process to looking right, he noticed Mito entering from another hallway. Only she was looking to her left, in the process of looking right. Their eyes connected and they proceeded to look to their right. Naruto instantly noticed another Kayubi no Yoko, except this one was chained in every way imaginable for a fox its size. The chains made it completely immobile except for the six tails that moved freely behind him. So the containers finally joined minds to visit us. Spoke Q from its chained position. An. I'm going to call Naruto's Kayubi, Yoko, while I call Mito's Kayubi, Q. But remember that Naruto's Kayubi is caged and Mito's Kayubi is chained. Naruto turned to face Yoko, what's the meaning of this? I was positive you were absorbed a long time ago, completely purified by the activation of my Rinnegan. You screwed up kit, your seal failed to do its job. Yoko said ignoring the question. What does it mean? Mito said walking up to Naruto. So it seems I become soft in the future. Q said, you shut your damn mouth. Yoko said growling at the other Kayubi. Future? What does he mean? Mito asked looking at the caged Kayubi. Go on, explain to her mortal. Explain your fuck up. Q said growling as its tails smashed against the walls and floor behind him. Naruto's mind was going a mile a minute as everything literally flashed before his eyes. Everything soon clicked to realization. Okay Mito-sama, here's the truth. I'm from the future. The caged Kayubi is mine. Obviously the other is yours. Naruto dropped the bomb. The future? But time travel is impossible. Mito exclaimed completely skeptic about the situation. Not for the king of fucking up there. Q said. Naruto glared at the chained fox. I'm not a fuck up. I just make mistakes. So you're 12 again huh? Damn that must be hell and with a new everything. What happened to your blonde hair? Yoko asked. Naruto enjoyed the change of subject and nodded. Yeah, except this time I actually had a good childhood, even if it's filled with war. And my hair, Naruto said grabbing his silver bangs. Yeah, that changed with my chakra. He said rubbing his long silver hair. I need a haircut, Naruto added with a chuckle. It's good to see you again Naruto. Yoko said, yeah, you too furball. Naruto said loving his nickname for the fox. Stop ignoring me, Q yelled, slamming his tails harder. The mindscape rumbled with the slamming, before chains sprouted and wrapped around the tails. There, Mito said after binding the fox. Now fully explain everything, she said glaring at Naruto. With sweat going down his brow, Naruto explained everything, with Yoko adding, that during his fight with Madara, his seal was further, distorted, and became an entirely different seal. Naruto told her about everything from his time and then he told her about his mother and father and fighting his mother not even 24 hours ago. When I mean he told her everything, I mean everything.
from his birth to that very moment. Mito stood there completely shocked. Wow! So Madara survived the fight with Hashirama-kun and went on to completely fuck up the world. Mito deduced. So what do we do about the two Kayubis? You have to fuse us together. Yoko said. Are you crazy? And give you 18 tails of power. Fuck that. Naruto said. No, idiot. You need to take complete control of my chakra and make it your own. And fuse my subconscious with the other. His own chakra will erode and all fade within him. That's the solution. That's why I've been telling you that there can be only one. Yoko said giving Naruto and Mito their solution. Will you really let me do that? Naruto asked, only to see Yoko nod. I promise, and as a kitsune, I'm bound by my word. Yoko said, Arigato Kayubi. Naruto said as he jumped at the cage and peeled the seal off. Instead of the gates bursting open, like Naruto would have thought, they slowly opened. The Kayubi stepped out, his tail swinging around as he laid in front of Naruto. Naruto walked up to his snout and laid his hand on it. Sayonara Kayubi no Yoko. He said as his body was immediately filled by Kayubi's chakra. A flash of light blinded the spectators. A red glow overcame Naruto, before it started to dim and turn silver, before that disappeared. The light left and the spectators were surprised to see a spectral image of the Kayubi at the size of a small fox. Now throw me at the other Kayubi. Yoko said loosing its powerful booming voice. Naruto did as he was told and watched as he lost the person that has been with him his whole life. With that everything shattered. XX. Naruto and Mito were returned to the outside world. They laid in a crater, their previous Yuki cloaks gone. It had seemed that all that time spent in their linked mindscapes was equivalent to a second in the real world. I think our fight's over. Mito said from her position on the floor. Yeah, I guess it is. Naruto said as the chakra signatures were only a few seconds away from them. So are you going to tell anybody else your secret? Naruto slowly shook his head. There will be no reason to. He said sitting up as nearly all of the Anbu and Janan arrived at their location, with the Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage, at the front. What the hell happened here? He asked in full Hokage mode. Oh nothing. Naruto waved at him nonchalantly. I just said something I shouldn't have. Naruto said chuckling nervously. How do you explain the two separate pillars of Yuki? Those were both me, upping the power. I do have complete control of the Kayubi's power. The Uzumaki clan head said. I you do not want to know what was said, trust me. She said keeping up the act and menacingly glaring at Naruto. Hiruzen stared at the two. Okay. Naruto you're not off the hook. Maybe your punishment should be changing Kensai's diaper for a month. He mused out loud as everybody left, sensing that they weren't needed, the Hokage included. Ah oh man, I hate changing Kensai's diaper. I swear if he pees on me one more Tim. Calm down Naruto. Mito said interrupting him. Naruto shook his head. Thanks Mito-sama. What did I say about calling me Sama? She said annoyed as she too sat up. But you are the clan head, thus you should have respect. Well how about you take the title? Nah, too much responsibility. Not to mention having to go to the boring council meetings. Oh don't get me started on the meetings. I mean, I love Toborama dearly, rest his soul. But creating a civilian council was the dumbest thing ever. You're from the future, how come you didn't stop him? She said playfully hitting him. And how was I supposed to do that? Was I supposed to go up to him and just say, Oh Toborama, don't make the civilian council, they fuck up the future. How the hell was I supposed to explain that? Well we'll never know now will we? Mito said standing to her feet. Whatever. I guess it's time for me to go home and deal with Nisama. Bye Mito-sama. Stop calling me that. Mito said slapping Naruto in the back of his head. Alright alright. Bye Bon. Naruto said substituting himself with a log. Just in time. Because the log exploded. End flashback. Naruto was thrown from his reminiscing as they arrived at the house. Mito had moved from her house in the forest to the village. To take care of Kashina. Naruto knocked on the door and said little girl opened the door. Ah Naruto ni what are you doing here? Kashina said as Naruto crouched down to hug her. She's been calling him that, ever since he rescued her from the pursuing Iwa ninjas. Sadly he was too late to save her uncles from certain death in front of her eyes. Naruto knew they were going to destroy Uzushiogakure, but he didn't know exactly when. So when word came that Kashina was being escorted to the village, he cursed, because it must have already happened. 
He promised her that he would always take care of her, but she was given to Mito to take care of, because she was the clan head. Oh I'm just here to see Bon. I found another Uzumaki. His name is Nagato. He said nudging Nagato forward. Ooh, he has the Rinnegan too. How good is he with it? Kashina asked as her blue eyes turned into the Rinnegan. Not very, he just got it and he doesn't know how to deactivate it yet. Naruto said rubbing Nagato's head. Is that Naruto Kunai here? A voice said from the back. Yeah, it's me Bon. Naruto said a little loud. Suddenly the gravity around him tripled and he nearly dropped to his knees. He groaned in annoyance, he had forgotten about that security system. The house had seals everywhere and when a certain word was mentioned the person would be subjected to extreme gravity. The only reason it hadn't happened before was because he wasn't in the house yet. Soon Mito walked into the living room. Ah, oh, you've gotten stronger. I'm sure you quickly cancelled your own gravity seals in the nick of time though. She said snapping her fingers, cancelling the gravity affect. Naruto chuckled. I can't believe you still remember about the five-star gravity seal. He said resealing the gravity, as all the points returned to being on his wrists, ankles, and his neck. He hid the point on his neck with special makeup. Maybe it's time to go up to three. He thought, since he's been at two for the longest. He cursed himself for forgetting about his creation up until a couple of weeks ago. She nodded and looked at Nagato. So he becomes pain. Eh he doesn't look like much. She thought. Another one Naruto, this is the second one. You're becoming a little Uzumaki hunter huh? Naruto chuckled, yeah. He said, but she heard it as, don't expect any more. Naruto began rubbing the back of his head. So shall we talk over tea? She nodded and walked towards the kitchen. That's all for now if you enjoy it then please like share and do comments.